Hello everyone to the W Podcast episode 2 with your uh, friendly neighborhood healers, a movie and uh, Saucy J is here with me. Our main topic today is going to be Mythic Plus, but before we get started with this, we already have some life changes on the servers uh, announced by Blizzard. And there is some healing stuff in there as well, so uh, let's go briefly through them uh, and discuss them, see if they're uh, interesting. Um, I guess we can start with the uh, Restoration Druid, which gets their Swiftman healing increased by 25%. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's a good that's a good one. I mean, I you know, I do PvP. It is uh, this is not limited just to PvE, so that's kind of nice. But having two Swift Men's could be interesting. For Mythic Plus, I ha did some keys last week, but not very high. I think I did a couple tens, and that was it. Um, and it felt fine. That was before the buff. So to get a twenty five percent bump on Swift Men feels kind of nice. Um, outside of that, I think it's it's okay. I, th I think Resto's in a good place. I think that's fine. I don't know how it's going to impact Raid, though. You have any thoughts on that? No, I haven't seen many Druids in Raid, to be honest. Uh, not sure what's up there. Uh, but the Swiftman, definitely nice increase because one of the weaknesses of the, the rest of Druid is the spot healing. Uh, so that is going to help there, but Swiftman is not something that you spam, you know, like, let's say, healing search on, on the Shaman or something similar. So that's going to help help a little bit, but it's not going to change the play style. So I'm I'm still not a fan because if you end up having to spam regrowth at somebody, that just feels bad. Um, yeah. So yeah. yeah. So you're talking about in Mythic Plus? Uh, yeah. That's yeah. Mythic in Mythic Plus. Plus yeah. yeah. I I yeah. don't I don't PvP almost at all, so I I can't say well, how it is there. But raid. yeah, between raid and Mythic Plus, how do you feel? Because yeah. I my opinion, real quick. Raid, I, I love Druid and Raid, and uh, I don't spot heal, so it's I don't think it's impactful in, yeah. in Raid for Swift, Swift Men. For Mythic Plus, I've never really felt like... Resto Druid, I don't know how many keys you've done, but it's annoying. There's it's The APMs on Resto Druid is the most annoying out of all the healers. My finger... I can only do like one or two keys, I'm old, so... <laughs> <laughs> After like two keys on Resto Druid, my hands are screaming at me because it's like every global, it's something. So yeah. when I do it like that, I don't feel the need to have to often do spot healing unless somebody did something really bad. If you're pugging, that's quite often. So I think pug friendly, this is amazing um, for that. But if you're in a coordinated group, like when I run with the guild, uh, you know, I it's I don't think it's going to be a big, big difference. I see, but I put all, all of my keys, so there's always something going wrong, and um, I'm just spamming regrowths to whoever messed up, you know, and that feels bad because there's nothing you can do. Like, even if you play the cat form uh, hero talents, even if you play the other hero talents where you can cast in, in yeah. uh, caster form and you have those instant star falls, etc., I can't even send them in because, as you said, every global one, I have to fix somebody's mistake. And for Druid, it's really bad if you have to spam um, regrowth. So it's a good change. But uh, for me, especially in Mythic Plus, I think there there needs to be something else there uh, to accommodate a little bit for people making mistakes. For Raid, I've actually never been a fan of Druid healing in Raid. It's a little bit degenerate. You're not spreading the hearts basically mindlessly, and then something happens, you press a button, they heal, and, and that's it. Uh, but as I said, I haven't seen many Druids. We don't have a Resto Druid in our guild, so I don't even know how they perform compared to everybody else. Um, but yeah, it's it's a change. Uh, they're looking into it. To be honest, this is what the, the fifth buff they they're getting now <laughs> since yeah. the start. Yeah. So uh, that tells you a lot. If something poor is getting druids. buffed five times in a row and there's no nerfs and anything, druids. then yeah, poor druids. Poor druids. Um, all right. So there are some interesting buffs to the DPS classes. Uh, I guess we can stop on the monk mistweaver very quickly, increasing the damage for the uh, conduit of the celestials. Um, this one is yeah. also a little bit weird to me because um, I do a lot of damage on the monk. Like, I play it regularly. Um, it does more damage than my shaman often, which has, like, higher item level gear. So mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure why this happens, but, um, I mean, I welcome it. I, I would I would be fine doing more damage. <laughs> yeah, for, for me, I think it, I think it's like... Hey, we, you know, at the higher levels, right? It seems like Blizzard tries to accommodate for the top tier and, you know, they try to keep everybody happy, but you can never really do that. Higher end keys, you know, healer has to do damage and discipline. If, if you can't keep up with a disc priest, then it's like, 
what am I supposed to do, right? And so I think when I see like the the you know what we're going to talk about in a few seconds with Shaman and then here with Miss Weaver to do more damage, be able to keep up with I don't know, I guess top end discs are doing like 600k sustained damage, um, which is a lot. So you know I see it's and and that the other thing with uh, with your disc priest is like your damage is healing, so you kind of get the benefit of the both. Whereas with Miss Weaver, there's some of that. Condor the Celestials, uh, that's the one that like the, the the thing bounces around. Is that that one? Which one is that? No, that's your uh, main hero talent skill that you channel for a second and it heals and it does damage and it provides the shields, all of those things. Oh, so it does. It has a dual purpose. Okay, that's yeah, cool. I yeah. haven't played much with Miss Weaver this season. So. Yeah, well, the damage of this specific skill was, I don't think, was amazing. So buffing that is fine. I don't think it's going to be a huge buff overall. But uh, it's just interesting to me that they're, they're going into that direction. And... Uh, Honestly, I don't care if they can keep up with Disc Priest because this is irrelevant in low keys. People are actually not yeah. playing Disc Priest in low keys. Uh, so yep. there's no one to compete with. Um, but I'll scroll down very quickly because the Shaman changes for Restoration. They're buffing the Farseer damage for the Ancestors, uh, Chain Lightning and Lava Burst. I guess the same thing. Uh, the Shaman, though, is this is specific to one of the hero talents and everybody's playing Totemic because it's very easy uh, compared to Farseer. Uh, from my personal experience, you can get similar out similar output with both hero talents. Like it doesn't matter if you play Totemic or Farts here, but Totemic is so smooth, man. Like it it, it just flows. It's so yeah. easy. So I think the main reason that people are avoiding Farts here is not the throughput, be it damage or healing. It's more of a uh, okay. I have to press that many more buttons. I have to maintain two more things than compared to Totemic. Um, so maybe that is the the main reason people are not playing it. Buffing the damage, is it is that nice? Yeah. Is it going to help to get more people to play it? Probably not. Yeah. I I mean I, I've played quite a few games with Shaman. I think I'm twenty five hundred on Shaman, um, a little over twenty five hundred. And um I you know, I do, don't know why I would go because we play a, a ton of classes, right? It's like why would you go back when Totemic is so smooth, it's so easy. It's comfortable. You have all these like, why? Why, why would you do well, that? I think I, they're I they're trying to bring up the hero talents that are underperforming, whatever that means. Because yeah. I don't think Farseer is underperforming. But, um, I mean that's a nice change. But I don't think that's gonna bring it up. <laughs> you know that that's yeah. not the way to do it. If 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 that's yeah. what you want to do, you know, because we're guessing here. Yeah. Um, um, the priest one was interesting. So there's a holy priest buffs, uh, which I think is nice. The holy words, serenity and sanctify. Uh, maybe that's going to help a little bit with the AoE healing, uh, specifically the second one, because this is why yeah, I thanks. don't like holy priest in Mythic Plus specifically. Uh, in raid, they're pumping. Uh, the halo, yeah. halos are doing insane amounts yeah. of healing. Crazy. Uh, but yeah. the halo is not enough to carry you in an M+. Plus, so needing something extra there to do AoE healing is always nice. And maybe this is going to help exactly in that direction. Serenity makes no sense to me. It's already a huge heal. Yeah. I don't see what 25% is going to really do there. Sanctify. I would, honestly, I'd rather see 50% Sanctify, 0% Serenity to be good. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be fine with that. I, I'm yeah, because Sanctify that. doesn't, it feels like it doesn't, I barely, the only reason I do it is for CDR. That's literally the only reason I do it or to get a bigger, a bigger heal uh, on my heal. It, like, I, it's, it feels so unimpactful that I just do it for maintenance on cooldown reduction and, and getting a bigger heal. Yeah. So it's the only reason I press it. Well, those are nice changes though. We can, we can agree on that. Yeah. Uh, they're moving uh, yeah. into the right direction because I think Hall is one of the worst uh, represented uh, healers right now in Mythic Plus along with Druid, but we'll have a chart later. And um, no changes for Disc, which uh, I, I, I'm actually content with that because Disc is a very specific type of healer that uh, I know you play it. I actually play a lot too lately. I enjoy the play style, but um, that's not something that you do in box. You know, it, it's, it blasts in high keys, but the game there is completely different than what you and I play. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you know, uh, it, it wouldn't make sense, I guess, to nerf it. Um, it wouldn't make sense to buff it. So it's not on the list. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I could agree with that. I think I was surprised uh, that there wasn't some minor buffs. Um, but uh, I'm sorry, 
um, minor nerfs on the damage. Some of the damage just feels incredible, and the healing is just insane. It's really even on the pugs I'm doing. I'm not get, having a problem getting invites, and it, it's blasting, and it feels really good. So I, it's nice to see the damage I'm doing. Most of the time, I'm doing more than a tanks, unless it's like a warrior or a prop pally that's just actually pushes buttons. Um, and even then, I'm keeping up. Uh, it just feels it feels really good. Okay. Yeah. All right, so those are the changes. Uh, I guess we can jump on the main topic for today, which is going to be uh, how your M plus season has been going so far. Um, and uh, from there, I guess we can jump into the minor topics. Um, yeah. So yeah, how is the season going for you? How much are you playing? Are you enjoying it? And what problems are you seeing? Yeah, I, I, I know at the beginning of the season, before the season started, I had a tier list of like what I was going to play and I was all in on Resto Druid. And then I had like my yeah. priests kind of like next. And then it was like, I wanted to play Warlock. And uh, I kind of went with that pretty quickly. Um, I did get the pre-launch. So I, I have, I think I have like 18 max level characters at this point, multiple priests, multiple Warlocks, multiple Druids, multiple... Um, but all in all, I haven't really started to push. And this is the first week where I finally felt something where I was like, okay, I want to push. So I did Warlock, I think, to like 2300. Uh, got my Druid to like 2100. Switched. Played Rogue. Got it to like 2K. Shaman, I jumped on it and had fun doing Totemic and pushed it to 25. But I was just having more fun doing a bunch of uh, Hunter so I bounced around a lot, and then um, I started. Uh, one of my friends has been asking me to do some PvP, and so they wanted me to play disc. So I've been doing more disc, and I was like, "It feels good. It feels really strong. I want to do mythic keys with it." So I leveled another priest, uh, night elf priest, and just started blasting. And and all pug, I didn't link my IO, so they can't see that I'm twenty six hundred or whatever. Um, and just have been pugging and pugging and doing all the twos, all the threes, all the fours. And so now I'm up to like 2,400. Uh, I'm in a weird place right now on the disc where it's like, I, I'm spamming eights for the gilded crests, but I still need to up. I need to do like fours through sevens to get some of my other pieces that I, I don't really want to do them because it's the same t length of time. But even on the pieces that I'm getting in the eights, I need those crests to upgrade them. So it's really a funky place to be. And there's no way I'm going to downgrade the gilded crests for the lower crests. Yeah, that's not um, a good strategy. No. So it's kind of like, uh, it feels like really bad homework. Um, I didn't do any delves. I did do a bunch of PvP on it at first because it's just so easy to get six tens in PvP for me because I do PvP. So I just did like two hours of PvP and got a bunch of uh, conquest and got all a bunch of 610 item level crafted gear, which helped a lot with Valor Stones and some of the early gearing. But now I'm in this weird place. But all in all, I feel good. I'm gonna push. Um, I'm gonna push for 3K on my priest. I will say I don't have to 100% pug it because I I am a GM co GM of a guild that is Mythic Guild and we have multiple 3K players so and they always want to play with me and i'm just like no i want to pug i just like the pug, the pug mm -hmm. life there's something with like not the ease there's a there's, there's something with going through the challenge making myself better not playing with the best players what can i do better to you know augment some of their missteps it kind of brings attention to my because yeah, my thoughts is like when you play with good players you don't have to play as well, and sometimes that's a downside. You know, that's a downfall for yourself, right? But when you're playing with kind of uh, lesser skilled or lesser experienced people, it kind of makes you pay more attention to your abilities, your awareness, boss timers, positions, things like that. So I do enjoy the uh, the pug life, and uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. So I think I'm gonna push priest to three k as disc. I'm yeah, forward to that. I, I agree there. Like on on a high key, if it's a good group, you can basically fall asleep if if you're not pushing like very very high keys. Okay. And then when you're doing pugs, if it's like four, six, something like that, you're always on your toes because you know somebody's eating the next fronto and. You know, it's your job to save them. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's kind of how I feel. Uh, I guess you're playing a lot of ults. I do the same. Uh, I'm trying to get all the healers to uh, at least 2,500. Uh, I have a three maybe done already. Um, and um, I guess we can start from there. But 
I think that when you're running your dungeons, and it doesn't matter if you're in your main, if you're in your old, uh, you're basically always farming the wrong quests because of that tiered system where you have tiers in the gear and you have different types of quests. Um, and, you know, it, it doesn't matter how you end up there. Like, if you have that one good piece that you actually want to spend quests to and upgrade it, and you're doing low keys, you're not getting the gilded quests, and then it becomes kind of the opposite. You get the good gear, you upgrade it, but then you have those lower uh, item level pieces and you don't have the bad quests now. Um, so I think that's a huge problem. And also the Valor Stones is something that's obnoxious. I don't think that should be in the game at all because uh, they're, they're either you have 2,000 of them as I do on my Shaman right now and there's absolutely nothing that I can do with them. If I get to upgrade a piece, I do a few dungeons and they're capped again. But when I needed them and when I need them on my oats, there's no easy way to farm Valor Stones, right? Uh, like, what are what are the options? There's a quest there, and not all the world quests gives you Valor Stones, right? But let's say there's a quest that gives you Valor Stones. It gives you 20, and I need 150 mm -hmm. to upgrade my my piece. So what am I supposed to go and do, like, 10 world quests? Uh, world quests? Like, there's probably not 10 world quests that, uh, quests that give you Valor Stones uh, whatsoever. Uh, so you're either starved and the Valor Stones is what's preventing you to upgrade your gear even if you have the crests, or they're, it doesn't matter if they're there, you know, because you have 2,000 and now you're you're wasting them. Uh, so from that perspective, I think that uh, Valor Stones could just be removed. I don't think anyone's going to say anything about it. Um, it would be nice if somebody's actually using Valor Stones regularly and they enjoy them, let us know in the comments below because uh, I would be interested what is the situation, what is the corner case where that happens. Um, and then uh, when we get to the crests, um, even with the crests, um, and I would also loot that to the gear uh, because the other kind of bottleneck when you're gearing old specifically, uh, it's very slow because you can get some hero pieces from, from the dungeons and from the raids, but the mythic track pieces, you can only get basically once per week, right? If you're not on your main, if you're not killing bosses, etc., you get that one shot in the vault, which could be disappointing because you can get a piece that you already have or something that's really bad, right? Um, so that process is very slow. And um, unfortunately, there was an interview with Ian where he said, yeah, we're kind of happy how the crash system works. And, you know, we just need to clear up a little bit the namings, which are horrible, by the way, but that's a different topic. Uh, and then we'll be fine. Um, however, I think that um, something needs to be done because um, it, it's not that system is, is not enjoyable at all. Um, the only thing that I kind of like is the fact that right now gearing your main is not as easy as previous seasons, right? So um, I'm still not at the cap of uh, being able to upgrade every single piece. Like I need one or two more weeks to do that, right? Um, so that is a little bit longer. Uh, maybe that's something positive. Um, but uh, on all of my oats, it, it feels horrible. And I have this idea where uh, instead of having um, first the different types of crests and then having the different tracks of gear, what would be if you uh, the item level drops for a certain piece, it drops at certain item level, and you're allowed to upgrade it only, let's say, four, five, or six times, right? So it doesn't matter what the track of uh, the piece is, you're only allowed no. to upgrade it that number of times. So that's going to remove the tiers, the tracks of the pieces, right? Um, and you can even accommodate something with the same way with with the crests. And uh, if they're uh, kind of afraid that people are going to explode this and you know, upgrade all their gear in, in week one, you can implement some kind of caps. Let's say if you upgrade a piece of gear with crests once or twice, it heats up. So you're not allowed to upgrade it, you know, until again, until it's uh, cooled down, which could take like a, like a week, right? So I think there's better ways to, to approach the system, uh, which is first going to make it easier to understand because if you present that system to a new player with all the track uh, pieces and the yeah. crests and the different types, uh, their head is just going to blow up. Like uh, I needed to watch a few videos when they first introduced it just to, to grasp the concept of this. Um, yep. So uh, that is going to make it easier to understand. And then I think, um, let's say you don't have the, the, the track pieces, uh, it's just one type of gear and you can upgrade it any number of uh, a certain number of uh, times. 
then you can actually open up like it would matter if you do it on a plus 10 or a plus nine, right? Uh, because you you can probably get it to drop with three item levels, levels higher, but the difference is yeah. not going to be that huge. And the items that you get, uh, you can also get them relatively high compared to what you're going to be getting in the vault, right? Um, but uh, it will make more sense and maybe you, even you can open it to like, eh, maybe that's too much, but you can get higher uh, gear to drop in like 11s, 12s, etc. Uh, if you look into it from the rate perspective, the later bosses can drop items that are a few, um, few item levels higher, right? So that would make sense to progress them and fire them, etc. Um, so yeah, I don't know what you think about this, but in, in my mind, the system needs to change. And this is just my, my take on this, but having no tracks uh, is, and, and you can introduce some kind of bottlenecks and, and cap everything, but having no tracks and no different types of crests, I think is going to, to be a huge win. Yeah, I I don't like the two the two currency system. I I don't think it makes a ton of sense. I don't understand the logic of it. I don't mind the the upgrade paths in the sense of that that's a mechanic. What I don't like is look if you play a bunch of alts, and you know I think on my my disc priest I did a ten at like six fourteen or six twelve. I timed it. Uh, it was a guild run, and there was two of us that were undergeared, and the other three were pretty well geared. Um, but I healed it. I was the healer in that, and I was able to heal it. Obviously, everybody's stopping things and kicking, you know, doing the right thing. But you know, if you have the skills and the capabilities, or I'll even give you a better example. Like right now, I do an eight. If I get a piece of gear from an eight, I shouldn't have to go back to a seven, a six, or a five to upgrade it, right? If I get it in an eight. I should be able to stay in an eight to upgrade that piece higher instead of going back down a tier. That's a I think take. they do it like that to like, I don't know, to make you go back and do low keys, but it's like, I, I don't understand. So I, I'm okay with the, the tiers and, you know, if they could fix the naming and all that, but just make it so that there's not this, this backwards loop where you have to go backwards to do things. If you have the skill to get the gear at a higher level, you should be able to start upgrading it at that level if you continue to run those keys. I, I don't get why I'm doing eights and I got all the, I got like seven or eight pieces in, in my bags that I, I can't upgrade because I don't have those uh, ruined crests or whatever they are, you know, yeah. like it's, and now I'm dreading going back and get, because I, I'm at a, I'm stuck. My item level stuck now at like 619 and I, can't, I can't, I can go to a 10, but it's hard to get invites to those because my item level and I don't have my main link on purpose, right? I, sh I could just easy do it and they'll see it and do it, but I don't want to go through that, right? I want to go through the experience as a, just a brand new user, you know what I mean? A brand new player or whatever. I don't want them to know I have mains that I have maybe higher IO. Um, I, you know, so, but I'm stuck then in the meantime, yeah. which is, it's, it's really unfortunate. I think my main point is that as long as you have those tracks where gear drops in different tracks and as long as you have those different crests, you can try to fine tune this. So maybe you're going to get these crests on that uh, item level or in that level of the dungeon, Mythic Plus key, etc. Right. But as long as you have those tracks, there's a difference. There's a gap between those tracks. Uh, I don't think you'll be able to tune it so so everybody's happy, right? You, you're always going to be doing some content and that content is not going to be dropping what you need. I don't think you can fine tune it to that degree that everything is perfect. Um, so from that perspective, um, that's why I'm kind of like advocating for removing those those tiers and those, uh, those gaps that are being created by them. Uh, because otherwise you'll be stuck into that loop of uh, people telling you, oh, you need to to lower this threshold or make it so that this drops that crest. And uh, I don't see how you get away from this unless you remove, you know, the different uh, types, the different tiers. And that happened, right? Uh, you you had you didn't get gilded until ninth. Yeah. So and they then, lowered it. They, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, what what are you gonna do next really season? Really upset about it. Yeah, because yeah, people are exactly. not happy. Lower it again? Like, yeah, it doesn't make yeah. sense. Uh, since yeah. we're on on the gearing topic, um, there was actually a very hot take by by Grau who was saying, um, you can actually introduce uh, dinars or whatever the type of things is that you can buy gear with, uh, which Blizzard doesn't want to do. But then why not do it late in the season, right? Because B Blizzard is afraid that you're gonna get all the best gear in the beginning, etc. But now we've been here for a while. And I've yeah. been playing my my main like uh, 
a, a lot and I'm still missing some some best items, right? And it's not one or two. Mm -hmm. Like I'm using stuff, uh, not even I'm not even gonna mention what happens if you switch your spec to something else, but that's a different topic. So um for example, trinkets and, and things like that, even if they're for Mythic Plus, right? Um, I would like to be able to get them in Mythic Track instead of being a hero track. So if they don't like the, the dinars being a thing in the beginning, because people can easily get geared they want, maybe like late in the season when the season is already stalled a little bit and people are playing less because they achieve their goals, etc. Maybe they can do something there. Uh, and that is also going to allow you to get another piece of gear on, let's say, Mythic Track currently on, on your ult, so you can a little bit speed up the process of, of getting the good gear. Um, what's yeah. your take on that? And do you have like a better so, suggestion? Yeah, so if you if you draw out the main reason there's some of this uh this this bottlenecking, in my opinion, is mythic raids, right? Blizzard knows that guilds like Liquid or Method or you know, all the Echo, all the all the Limit, all the, you know, I don't know, Liquid, it used to be Liquid, right? Uh, whatever. Um, uh, they they are insane, right? They'll they'll get six split runs, they'll do the keys, and, it, you know, and, and that's what I think Blizzard's trying to avoid, right? And so going to your point, you know, after Hall of Fame is closed, just open it up. I mean, that's the real, that's where most of the, we want to, we want to curtail these guilds from like overly killing their players to get the highest gear before the, for mythic rating. So let's intentionally bottleneck the, or gate the gear uh, acquiring so that it's a fair race because not everybody can do 15. They don't have $250,000 that they could spend on gear uh, you know, doing all these split runs. So let's kind of bounce it down a bit. So I think, you know, to your point, after the uh, Hall of Fame, which if you don't know Hall of Fame is, I know you do, but it, it maybe some of the viewers watching, the, usually it's like the top 200 guilds that kill all of the Mythic Raid bosses um, get into this Hall of Fame thing. I don't think it's officially, and is it officially so, like? They closed it last week. I think they did. Okay. So they, yeah. they are now endorsing it. It didn't used to be like a blizzard thing. It was like a an outside of blizzard no, thing. I guess now they're, I, I don't know if they're officially tracking it themselves, but, uh, it was when the hall of fame was filled, then they would open cross server, cross server uh, rating, which okay. is not a thing anymore. Okay. Like you can cross server raid yeah, right now, now. Uh, as well, but yeah. they were actually looking for that hall of fame to fill up in order to open the, the cross room rating. So they were definitely aware of it and using it. Yeah. So I think, you know, once that's achieved, once they close the Hall of Fame, just just do it. Open it up. Bust it open. Let people have fun on alts. Let other people that maybe don't have alts but have mains that want very cool gear. And it's the end of the season. Like, let them pump up and, and do the thing. Like, what, why 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 still a bottleneck it? I don't yeah, understand. And I, I'll, I'll just add to this. It's not just about the rates and getting stuff there. Even now on my main I, I am pushing keys now, like I'm done farming. I don't want to be farming gear now. I just want to be yeah. trying to, yep. to to be able to test my skill to the next level. And uh, yep. I'm just handicapped if I don't have all the best gear. And I've, it's not like I didn't play this character, right? <laughs> I, I'm yeah. at, at like very high item level, I'm almost 3k IO. So uh, just let me let me blast and let me see how far I can get. You know, I, I had fun yeah. gearing and farming all the items and I'm still, do, still doing that on my oats, but at least on my main, let me have the gear. Let me send it and see where I can take it. Right. Here's a here's a hot take. Take the people that are redesigning the PvP and move them over to Mythic Plus because I got to tell you, like right now, Solo Shuffle is doing good. Battleground Blitz is doing good. Um, very very popular. Uh, right now, I can send honor from any of my characters to another one. Valor Stones, right? Why can't I send Valor Stones? Yeah, yeah, sure, hit me for 20% of it, but let me send Valor Stones to an alt. They're just racked up. I have a three characters that are capped at 2K. I can't do anything with it. Exactly. Why can't I send it? But I could send Honor to new characters so they can buy gear. Uh, right now, uh, uh, Valor is open, and I can buy boxes, and I could send those boxes to alts, and they get high-end PvP gear as soon as they log in, right? Log in. Open all the gear. Yeah, it's random, but it's gear. Why? Why can't those kind of concepts kind of happen 
in PVE, I don't understand. And yeah. So, yeah. And it's really convenient as a PvP player. That's so nice to be able to like level a hunter, have a bunch of valor and gear ready to go, and day day one. It's nice. Yeah, yeah, and, and they they should definitely think about it because now you that you said that on my main the lower crests. Okay, I'm still using the gilded crest there, right? But the lower crests are just piling. I, I can't use them, right? So uh, and those are the crests that I need on my olds that I'm currently gearing. So even if it's like the ratio uh, 90 to 15 that you get to trade them, yeah. if I can buy those in their warbound and I can send them to ults uh, that they can use to upgrade the yeah. gear, that's going to be pog, you know, because I farm those yeah. crests. It's not like uh, yeah. it, it's a free currency, right? I did the dungeons. Yeah. I got them at yeah, the end. The yeah, so uh, let me use them even if I'm use, uh, losing some currency because there, there's nothing I can do with them on my main. Um, so yeah, that's uh, definitely something that they should uh, probably think a little bit about. And since yeah. we're uh, talking about uh, gearing, uh, let's uh, use this to jump to the next topic as well. But uh, what is your take on delves and how much delves did you do in order to get gear for your tunes, be it for PvP or PvE? Yeah, it was only for PvE. Uh, maybe the first two weeks of the game, I really pushed to get all the eights, fill up the vaults. Um, try to get you know i would run it with some of the guildies that uh you know were doing their bountifuls or uh you know just needed help with their healer or tank uh in hopes that i would get uh, a map so i can get a hero piece um once i got enough gear i don't go in even on alts i just you know it, you can't do it as a healer unless you go with other people or i can't um it, a hunter i could do it a warlock i could do it tanks i can do it but outside of that um it just it's not enjoyable um so you know i i kind of avoid them at this point i i get that for some player types it's probably amazing but for me i i, I avoid it at this point yeah i'm kind of the same i i'm still doing it on like low level odds that i'm just starting like dps odds uh and i think they're amazing in the way that they're quick and you can do them solo even as a healer all of that takes a little bit longer right um and you get you get good gear and then you give you get a hero track piece in your vault and as you said if you get that bountiful map you can get a hero track piece from your next delf, delf as well so yeah. i think this is interesting uh the the downside is that at some point they kind of become a chore because i knew i had to go and, and get them right even if i did uh mythic plus dungeons or raid this is just an extra slot in your vault which is you can get there basically for free, right? So why not go and do them? So at some point I was doing a lot of them until I was able to start doing plus tens in, in um, Mythic Plus, mm -hmm. which now gives me a Mythic track gear. So yeah. I'd rather have this compared oh, to I the hero, yeah. right? Yeah, but uh, it takes a while to get there, right? If you're on a fresh character. So uh, on a fresh character, it's kind of like a chore that you have to do. Um, they're not as fun, and we talked about this in the last episode, but they're not as fun as some of the other content we've seen before, like Torghast, um, like the, the, the Visions, even, yep. or the Mage Tower, yep. you know. Uh, so um, they they quickly become boring. And Ian even address that you can, if you get all your gear from Delves initially, which you can totally do, uh, then you get to a certain item level, which is not bad at all. And then if you decide to jump into Mythic Plus at this point, it doesn't make sense to do twos and threes at that point because you're like 600 yeah. something item level. Yep. So yeah. it would only make sense to start from seven and eights. And that actually happened to me. So I have a character that's almost, let's say, six five or six ten, And I have mm -hmm. zero rider IO score because I haven't done any dungeons so far. I've only done delves and whatever, right? Crafting gear. Mm -hmm. And um, now nobody's inviting me into to keys because it looks very bad on paper, right? I have no IO score. Yeah. Uh, I don't yep. want to do twos. I, at least I want to get into like fives or six, potentially. I know that I can do them, you know, but nobody's going to invite you. And uh, we actually had a very nice comment um, on, on last week's um, um, episode. And uh, we get a, a person who said Delves and NPCs Dungeons are what brought me back into the game. I'm not so good to play single mostly, so I get kicked a lot. And the solo content actually enticed me back. So there yeah. are people who are, I guess, enjoying Delves and they're doing them specifically like as their main type of, of gameplay content. Uh, but that also brings another point that I have, and that's uh, how the dungeons, uh, the Mythic Plus is not very puck friendly this season. 
And uh, somebody in my chat in one of the streams actually mentioned this. Oh, part of the reason for that is there's many reasons, right? But one of the main reasons is the delves because people would get into delves, they're gonna get the gear, and they're somehow they're gonna jump into Mythic Plus, but they don't have the Mythic Plus experience, right? They yeah. they look okay with item level. Maybe they've done a few dungeons, they got the score, so now they get invited into keys, but they have absolutely no idea what's going on there. Um, and uh, another point that uh, I follow Grau a lot, but he also said the devs are not teaching you how to play the game, right? They they're not teaching you dungeon mechanics. Like it's nice to yeah. carry a candle around, you know. It's it's sure. some kind of a yeah. gameplay, but you're not learning a lot on how to play your class, how to react in certain yeah. situations, how to yeah. do boss mechanics in in Mythic Plus. Um, so I think that's a that's a relatively big problem. And um, I, I don't think they're going to be changing delves a lot, but maybe if they can like switch them so they can teach you something that's uh, a bit more important to do either raiding or mythic plus, um, and maybe maybe lower the gear that drops there. I don't know how that's going to be taken by taken by the public though. Yeah, I, it's a, it's a good point. I the 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 concept of like educating players in delves is is a good point i think the follower dungeon can maybe do that but the, that content is so basic i do have a friend that like that's how he leveled and that's the only he he would get mad he's a healer he's a shaman healer the guy I was telling you about that's the four the four button healer he only press four buttons uh you know he gets so mad because they just take off and he's like where do where i don't even know where to go like i have nowhere to i you know in follower dungeons it's like they take their time they wait for him they yeah. give him a mage table when it starts and he's happy right uh and so he enjoyed it and he literally leveled through follower dungeons um and he did learn a bit about his class and i i will say like if there's a new character like or i'm like when i went from voodoo to cell I went to follower dungeons to get my UI the way I wanted it, play around with cell, make sure I had all my things. So I think there's good learning opportunities uh, in follower dungeons. Um, some of that probably could happen in inside of uh, inside of the Dells, but I think they're going for something all altogether different in Dells. I think it's like a mini game or a mini mini yeah. environment for solo players. It just you know it's just different, right? Not dungeon, not. It's kind of a dungeon, but not really. So I, I don't know. It's cool, but uh, you know, I don't know where they're gonna take it. I and and the, and thinking about your point on transitioning from those two things to Mythic Plus, it's like night and day. Those are completely, yeah. especially once you get to a certain level in Mythic Plus, it's like it's a whole new world. Even the follower dungeons, though, like okay, they teach you a few uh, things like what buttons to push to heal, but. I don't think you can wipe in a follower dungeon. Like, I don't know what you need to do because I've done some for whatever reasons, like on oats, etc. And uh, like, I can pull the whole dungeon and still not wipe, yeah. you know? Yeah. It doesn't matter yeah. what role I'm playing. So um, it, it's also kind of like the same with the delves. Like you're, you're playing something, you're achieving something, maybe you're getting some rewards at the end. Maybe they're good, maybe they're bad, but it is not something that's teaching you how to do the other end game content. And that's fine if you don't want to do it, but if people are using this and then they're saying, yo, I actually beat the Delves, you know, I beat the follower dungeons, let me go to the next level now. And uh, the next level is a completely different game, you know, and, and you're yeah. not prepared because they didn't yep. teach you how to play uh, that, that well, wh next why game. Did, yeah, why didn't they do that for Delves though? Why didn't they, like, why don't they do an unlimited Delve system? Like, why, why cap it at 11? Why limit? If those players really are enjoying that, why not treat it like Mythic Plus? Why not give them the ability to go to 13, 14, 18, uh, you know, especially in certain contexts, maybe not five five players going in there, but if you maybe limit it to two people or or maybe yeah. even three, you know, give them the opportunity to maybe push in, in Delves. Maybe that's something, yeah. you know, I don't well, know why they limited it. Even there, like, uh, I've, I've done a plus 11 Delve just to get, like, there's an achievement to do a plus 11, but mm -hmm. I was not enticed to go and, like, farm them uh at that level because there's nothing right once i get the achievement get the yeah. why why am i doing plus 11s yeah. right so and that that happened relatively quickly like you get there you do it you're done and you're not, never going back into it uh because you're not getting better gear so if i'm to do a delve right now it's gonna be plus eight that's the easiest uh the the, the path of le least resistance right um, so yeah, yeah I, I think and and we talked about this before but they said okay this is an evergreen feature 
if it's an evergreen feature, they need to do something about it so that um, it, it's a little bit more fun to play in general. Uh, I guess there are people who are doing this for solo content, but um, the inclusion of everyone uh, should be like, they, they should try to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, re rewards, that's a different topic. Uh, they can work on that as well. Uh, but either make it more fun as Torghast was, or maybe at least uh, teach us how to play the game when you're in a Delph and don't just press W and you know you get your, your yeah. reward at the end. I, th I think well, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of say this and then we can maybe transition, but you know, uh, there's no leaderboards for Delves, right? Because it's capped at 11. Mythic Plus is the same thing. After a 10, you're, all you're getting is IO and the same gear. It doesn't actually matter after a 10. It's like saying you ran 11s uh, in Delves, but because they stop at 11, there is no way to have a leaderboard unless they start doing speed runs or something like that. But yeah. You know, give, give them an, an ability to create like, hey, I, I'm the best Delve person in the U.S. Uh, as a holy priest or as a sh shaman or whatever, right? Um, but because that's not there, there's no incentive. Like you said, you get an achievement and that's it. In Mythic Plus, there's, there's, I mean, outside of a ten, like I said, what do you get? Okay, go, you go to twelve, and all of a sudden you don't get, uh, you don't get the affixes, but, but it's just bragging rights at that point. There's yeah. no, nothing. Yeah. You're not getting anything else. Yeah, I, I'm sure some people are going to be against a, a little board in the Dells because I even think Blizzard thinks it's going to be more casual content, but um, it's it's way too casual for me right now. I think they, they need to do something uh, a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so I, I guess Delves is one of the reasons uh, why this uh, Mythic Plus season is not APEC friendly. But uh, let's look into some of the other aspects. Uh, one of the huge things is that, uh, so affixes is one of the things we're going to talk about. But before that, uh, the newly introduced, um, and this is related to affixes, the newly introduced system makes it so that in a plus 10, you're getting now both Fortified and Tyrannico at the same time. And mm -hmm. at a plus 12, uh, you are getting you're stopping with the old affixes but then you're getting this huge boost of additional 10 percent um for both uh, trash and bosses so that creates a huge brick walls uh in my opinion on those specific places and uh it makes uh, the jump from 9 to 10 and from 11 to 12 uh, a huge gap i think personally that <laughs> mythic plus is hard enough already as it is and uh, when you're going through the ranks, like if you're not playing in an organized group, if, group, if you're just pugging, uh, getting one key level higher is always a challenge for you, right? And it's a challenge from different perspectives. So it could be the gear, mm -hmm. you're under geared. Yeah. Uh, it could be your IO score. So uh, you're not getting invited. Uh, it could be like a skill issue because all of a sudden everything starts to hurt a little bit more. So getting that one extra key level higher is hard enough already. And now you have this huge brick walls at 10 and 12, which make it even harder to get uh, to the next level when once you get to that point. Um, so what is your take on that? Because I think the curve should be much smoother than what it is uh, right now. Yeah, I, I like the concept and, you know, being that I really only go up to 10 at this point and you know, I pugged, all, you know, I mean, you pugged. So we, I, I didn't notice a big difference from nine to 10. I felt like um, when there was groups that were doing the thing, it was smooth. But when, when they were not doing the thing, it was really rough and hurt, hurtful. But, but given the nine and the 10, I, for me as a healer, I didn't really notice it. Same as DPS. I think um, I, I felt like, and sometimes like on my warlock tens were funner because um, the trash was always going to last a little bit longer and I could actually get damage out. Whereas like demon hunters and rep pallies and, and things were just obliterating trash sometimes. And my damage would look terrible compared to them. Uh, once I got the tens, it was like, I was crushing it. Right. So, um, I, you know, I, I can't really speak on the 11s and 12s just cause I haven't yet pushed them because I will be probably the next episode, not the next episode, but the, following one after that i'll be probably in that realm um but you know i've listened to a lot of other people i have a guild and i hear them kind of complaining about it and how difficult it is and um you know failing keys and you know like a couple deaths people leave um yeah it feels like a very big wall 
And they're probably, you know, I think maybe the jump from, you know, going from like 24s and 25s and then now compressing that all down to like a 10 is a zero. And, you know, I think that was maybe a bit too much and maybe they can find something in the middle um, because it, it does feel like they're big steps, right? When you go, when you're going, I mean, I, I remember first time doing a couple eights and I'm like, this is, it feels really uncomfortable, um, you know, very difficult. Uh, and then the first time, you know, going to like tens, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was manageable. It didn't feel as big as like going from like a six to like an eight, um, but, but difficult. And so, yeah, I think the compression from like the big number keys from 24s and 25s and I mean, 30s, 28s down to, to, you know, zero as a 10 was, it was a big jump. And I, I think it probably was too much and they're trying to keep, they're trying to deflate those numbers, but it, it really creates these huge walls. Yeah. Well, I think the walls are there. Like I remember that when back when we were doing like 20s, uh, it would still be like if you're, let's say you're doing 23s and you need to jump into 24s, it still felt like a huge step, right? And that's still the case, like going from 10s to uh, 11s and, and so forth. Uh, but now some of the steps just feel much bigger, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, all of a sudden, like from going from 10 to, from nine to 10, uh, if it was fortified week, right? All of a sudden the bosses uh, are tyrannical and now they start <laughs> taking much more time and things like that. So those are things that I, I actually notice. And uh, because I'm pugging, it's just that uh, at least that was the case back in, in uh, more towards the beginning of the season, but, um, it was a harder step because people were under gear to that point. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, we would break much more keys compared to, let's say, a nine. Uh, yeah. Now, at this point of the season, I think people are over tense already. Like we, we over, over gear that content. So maybe that's why the tens don't feel that hard anymore. And I'm doing a lot of tense on alts as well. Um, but then as you go higher now, 11 to 12 is that huge gap because you get even harder content after that. Um, and then the jumps become bigger and bigger, uh, in my opinion. So um, I don't know if it's going to be beneficial to have the steps being smaller, uh, but at least for me, it gives me that sense of progression. Like when I do one key, um, uh, key level higher, you know, it feels good. It feels like you accomplished something. And um, right now getting one key level item higher is, is, just, is just way too hard in, in some instances. So. Um, let me say that actually having the twelves clear the other affects, uh, that's that's a huge win. Uh, I know you haven't done them yet, but uh, we're gonna talk about the affixes in just a second. But some of the affixes are just bad, <laughs> you know, they're obnoxious. So not having them on a plus twelve actually feels good, especially if let's say it's the the spell affix, and then all of yeah. a sudden that's cleared, and you don't have to change your talents and etc. Right? Um, so that feels good. Uh, but getting there didn't feel that natural. And um, even before, like because the steps in previous seasons were smaller, once I would get to the, to the 20s on my odds, then I would be fine pushing to 21s, 22s, etc. That It felt like this is achievable. Right now, I have absolutely no incentive to try harder content on my odds uh, because I know that the steps are bigger and it's going to be even a, a bigger struggle, a big, big hurdle to, to overtake. Um, so this is why I'm saying I think that the, the curve should be a little bit smaller and they address that because uh, that affix that you get on plus 12 was I think plus 20% uh, initially. They saw that this is too much. They reduced it to plus 10, right? Okay. Uh, so maybe maybe they're going to take even more action for, for next season and try to, to smooth it up uh, a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, I know they have a bunch of data on this and I'm sure they're going to be looking at it and analyzing it. And I think... Uh... Yeah, hopefully they 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 make a calibration to it to make it a little bit more. I don't that's not necessarily easy, but 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 gradual instead of like these big jumps where you know you have to fail something fifteen times. Because let's be honest, like I I haven't done the twelve, but I'd imagine the first time you're letting certain kicks get through, or somebody's dead, right? And now yeah. you you will probably talk about that one of the affixes, which is the fifteen seconds. And that's painful, right? Like, you know, and, and some players like, especially players that have already, you know, the mentality of like players that are like, I've already done these. You guys should know better. You should be kicking this. You should be stopping this, right? I'm leaving the key because you guys are terrible mentality, right? 
uh, we have four deaths already. We're never going to time it. Forget it. You know, now they, they address that, but, um, but yeah, so you you're also contending with the player base as well at that level. And, and I don't want to say elitism, but just, you know, you're going to, you know, sometimes you get a good group. That's all. Like I, I had a key the other day where, um, it was a eight and it was what, when I was lower item level and we had probably like 50 something deaths and nobody left, nobody was complaining. Nobody was blaming anybody. Everybody stayed. It was probably, it was Sunday. It was yesterday. So it was like right before reset or whatever. So everybody wanted their, it was probably their last key. They didn't want the, the vault slot. They were already committed. Yeah. yeah. They're like, I'm just going to finish it. And everybody was pleasant at the end, which was shocking, including me. So, um, you know, you have that experience, but then you also have the other experience where it's like one or two deaths and the tank leaves or somebody leaves. Yeah. Leave. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, well, you know, at 12, I got to think that, man, it's, there's that pressure of the time restraint because you have tyrannical and fortified so every second counts if you're missing kicks if you're missing stops if you're overlapping you know people people get maybe maybe a little upset i don't know you have more experience up there than than i do what would what you, what's your take oh it becomes much more punishing much quicker than it was before right uh so you have much less uh space for mistakes and uh, another thing I guess that changed is the timers a, a little bit more strict right now because we had the season in Dragonflight where you would have, uh, you could time, I think it was Black Crew Cold was the dungeon. You could have like 30 deaths and still time it on a high key level, you know. Um, so um, that's, that's also gone. Um, and one thing that I'm going to allude to is, uh, and the season, this season felt much more pleasant from that perspective, is, especially compared to the season three Dragonflight. But... There's much less one-shot mechanics and uh, heal unpleasant bosses, so to speak, uh, in which you are basically dependent on people pressing their defensives, at least on a, let's say, plus 12 key level, right? Um, there are some still bad things. We're going to talk about dungeon design in just a second, but uh, at least healing doesn't feel that bad from this perspective because in uh, some dungeons in, in Dragonflight, you knew that if something happens and the person doesn't help you with, with pressing the defensive, they're dead. Like yeah. there's no healing yeah. through that. Uh, there's yeah. much less of that in, in the War Within. So uh, I, I enjoy that a lot. Um, but the, the, the defensive bloat is still there. Like uh, there's uh, still classes that have way too many defensives. And uh, in, especially in higher keys, if they're pressing those buttons, and it's not even necessarily kicks and stops, right? If they're pressing mm -hmm. the defenses when they need to, uh, you're you're cruising, you're breezing because you know you're pressing a button and everybody stopped up. But if they're not, then you're struggling, right? Because everything is yeah. tuned basically at this level for them to be pressing their defensives, and yep. uh, that's basically the aspect that I I, I don't like. Uh, I think there's still too much design and still much too much defensives in the game. <laughs> Um, that that are requiring something like this, and that is fine on uh, high keys in organized groups, but in pugs, it, it's it's much harder. Like if you have a million kicks, obviously you're not going to coordinate that in a pug. Something's gonna go off, mm. and then somebody gets angry and leaves. Um, yep. So um, this is this is why I'm kind of like on this topic. It's uh, it's good season. It's good dungeon design. The affixes we're gonna talk about them that they're fine, but it is not bug friendly by by any means, right? And um, I I would be interested to find some data and figure out how many people are playing in bugs compared to how many people are playing in organized groups uh, in general. But even the people who play in organized groups, they also bug, right? outside of their yeah. play times with their, their friends. So yep. I would assume that the number of people playing Pugs is much, much bigger. So uh, I don't see why Blizzard shouldn't try to to cater a little bit to the people who are bugging and make it a little bit more bug friendly. I think uh, that that's going to be um, a huge bonus for the seasons and it will be interesting to figure out uh, if that increases the, the number of uh, players that participate in the system. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple really, I think, obvious, obvious, uh, maybe they're not obvious, but for pugs, um, the biggest thing for me, I think defensives, I was laughing earlier because I was thinking, man, I'm going to ask Wolvie, how many times does he press fade on his priest, right? Because it's so good. It's so good, man. It's like, it is such a, it's a nice defensive that's on a short cooldown and it's 10% and it's so good. Um, but when you think about, you know, kicks, you know, you got a shaman who stuns, 
uh, or knocks up, let's say the knock up is less obvious because the stun, you could see the static totem or the uh, yeah, the static totem or whatever it is. And so you know not to kick, but the knock up, you don't know. And you might be kicking the same time the shaman does the knock up and now you wasted a kick. Why can't that just be reset right away, right? It's not PVP where you could just press kick, 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 right? And, and, and kill somebody. But in a Mythic Plus dungeon, if you miss your kick, why not just put it on a GCD? I mean, nobody wants to waste GCDs. So put it on a GCD. Uh, lower keys make the cast times a little longer. Like, why? I mean, these are very simple things that could probably help out the pug community. But I, you know, I don't know. I don't know if Blizzard, I, I don't know what the strategy is. I think it's, it's, there's not a lot of, I shouldn't say there's not a lot of thought, but it seems very crude. It's just like, here it is, run with it. Yeah. This well, is what you get. Like one thing that they said, they, they kind of, there was a, an interview, I think it, it might have been Ian, but they said, okay, we understand that there's way too many, many defenses, right? But the problem is that people need those defenses for outdoor world or for delves or something like that. Um, and uh, I was sitting there thinking, why are people in Mythic Plus suffering? Because Joe, who's doing delves there, needs to have an extra defensive to press for, for whatever mechanic is in there. Like, nobody cares about that. No offense to anyone, of course. But uh, And it came to my mind that right now, there are two different tunings for PV and PVP. Like, when we see those right. nodes for changing yeah. something, it's like the oh, supplies yeah. to PVP or this works different in PVP, right? Yeah. So they are basically managing two separate games or two separate tunings, so to speak, uh, in order to maintain those two types of content. And I don't see why not they should do the same with uh, the different types of PV content, right? Because you do one set of gameplay, one type of gameplay in rates, it's yeah. another in Mythic Plus, and then obviously there's a third that uh, maybe you, you and I, we don't care about it, but there's also like the outdoor delves and whatever, uh, stuff that you're doing when you're not in the two pillars of rating and mythic plus. So why not tune everything and make the skills uh, so that they're only active, for example, in, in those uh, situations? Let's say you need an extra defensive in delves. Uh, once you go in, Brown gives you like this item, which gives you the extra defensive, or even if you want to have it for outdoor, as soon as you go out of Dornogal, you get this buff that gives you the defensive or something like that, right? Yeah. Um, if you don't want to embed it into the talents and stuff like that. So uh, separating the skills and the balance to be separate for Mythic Plus raids outdoor as it is for PvP, maybe that's going to fix a lot of issues because even right now, when we see some tuning happening to healers, DPS, tanks, uh, we're saying, okay, I see what they're doing, but this is because they want to buff this class to perform better in raid because they're at the bottom there. And this has a huge impact on Mythic Plus because now other skills are affected um, and you start doing yeah. a lot more damage in Mythic Plus. So they fixed yep. one problem in raid, but now they introduce different types of problems in different types of content where they did not intend that to be, to be the case, right? Um, so instead of... Uh, trying to basically hold all those um, all those apples in your hands at the same time, right? And you're starting to drop them because there are too many. Just try to separate everything and then you will have one set of tuning for Mythic Plus and everything that you do there is going to make sense and it's going to be, I think, easier for them to keep the balance intact as well uh, because it will be just one bucket that you're trying to manage, right? And then you're going to have separate skills and tuning for rate, etc. cetera, um, and another one if you want for outdoor and they can branch it into as many uh, as many pieces as they want. Uh, but I think this is something that would uh, that would benefit. It's probably not that easy to implement. It's going to take some effort, but uh, it's going to benefit the game in, in a long term. I don't think it takes a lot of effort, I'll be honest, because here's the thing. Like you pointed out, if I'm a priest in PvP, I can pick mind games. I can do phase shift, which phase shift, when I fade, I, I'm invisible to everything for a second, right? So I can I can totally avoid any frontal or whatever I want, right? And they can balance for that, right? I can get mind games, like I said, and that's not even something you can do in PvE anymore, yep. uh, but you can in PvP. Um, so, and then you go look at Delves and Bran is just an extension of your character and there's talents for that. 
And so that's just a talent build. So I, I agree. I think it, it actually, yes, it involves some upwork, some upfront work to kind of extract what you're going to pull out of um, World and Raid for Mythic Plus, but it allows them to have some very fine... And I got to tell you, from a PvP perspective, I love the fact that, oh man, they nerfed this thing because it's killing it in the raid now. My PvP character just got gutted, right? That's The days of that are gone. Like, it's so nice. Um, that's why I have so many alts, because I, you know, I'd have a character that I was pushing, and all of a sudden it's dead, right? I can't... I, because the mage barrier doesn't work anymore because it was broken in PVE, right? Uh, or, or vice versa. Some things would break in PVP and they've, they'd nerf it because of that and it would if, if impact PVE. Um, so I think that makes a lot of sense and they already did that with Delves, all right? To me, that's just an extension of your character. It's just another guy running around doing the stuff, but it's basically talents that you have um, that were passive, essentially. Um, I mean, it's crude, but it is what it is, right? Yeah, you do technically have some guy running around that can die, but whatever. Um, I could see them doing that for Mythic Plus and even eventually down the road, Raid even, because, um, you know, getting back to what you talked about with, like, kicks and dispels and uh, you got poisons and diseases and magic and, like, how do you handle that? Because not everybody does everything, right? Um, you know, being able to tailor it so that you have to have a very specific comp when you are building your mythic plus team, uh, you know, it's, it's, it really cuts off a group of people if you don't have the right comp. Right. And you need battle res, you need bloodlust, you need dispel, you need two dispels. It's like, okay, you're locked in. You're pretty much locked in at that point. And so I think it makes a lot of sense to be able to give specific characters abilities that can, okay, you know what? We'll be, you get the poison dispel. I'll, I'll get this other thing. Uh, cool. We could talk about it before we put the key in and then boom, we'll go. We have a good team. We don't have to care if it's a rogue or a mage or a warlock who can dispel in Siege of Boralus because we only have one dispel, whatever, right? Like you yeah. can, you don't have to be tunneled into these very specific, um, you know, builds. You can just have anybody come in and, and have a little bit more flexibility because it's content specific that's not going to impact everybody else that's outside of that content. Yeah. And I, I like that because in Mythic Plus, that's usually, we're going to talk about dungeon design, but that's usually one of the, the, the pain points, right? You don't have a specific curse dispel or something. But I think that applies to rate as well because, uh, all right, we know that Echo and Liquid are going to have everything that's needed to, to have the optimal group. But in your uh, weekly rates, and it doesn't even have to be bugging in your own guild, you might be missing a certain person. Like, for example, we just lost our evoker, so now we don't have an evoker at all in our, in our raid, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so what if you're missing Int? What if you're missing Fort Battle Shout, right? You can probably do something uh, in the same sense with Raid, where if uh, you could get some specific uh, skills, some specific talents just for the Raid only, and if you're missing something, you're not handicapped compared to the guilds that uh, actually have it. Um, so yeah, yeah I, I like this idea a lot and uh, I don't know how hard it is to implement, but uh, as you said, when this happened to PvP, I don't think, like everybody probably welcomed the idea. I don't think anyone was angry, oh, this skill is now Amazing. working in one way in PvE and another way in PvP. So yeah. if you do the same for uh, Raid and Mythic Plus only, if, even if it's just that, and set aside yeah. the Delves and the, the, uh, the uh, Outdoor World, the world. Everybody's gonna be happy. Like nobody's gonna say a thing. I think everybody's gonna welcome this with with uh, open hearts, and they're they're gonna they're they're gonna enjoy it for sure. Nobody's yeah, gonna I say agree. anything bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I agree. All yeah. right. So and it, it's more inclusive, so which is good. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, before we go to dungeon design, let's uh, let's mention the affixes so that we alluded to some of the stuff uh, already. Uh, what's your take on the new affixes that you get up until uh, twelve? Because uh, I assume you played with all of them by now. Yeah, my my mine's going to be a little more controversial than your. My take's going to be different. That's totally fine. I love all of it. I don't mind the dispels. I don't mind the CC. I don't mind you know, as a disc priest. I love this week, right? Because I get to death the death the effects, and it's it's a massive uh, it's a massive because uh, you know as disc priest when you do shadow word death. Uh, if they have it absorb, it's huge, right? It's it's big, it's big damage. And so that's amazing for me. I'm the first one hitting that thing when it comes out. 
Um, I like it. I think it's a different challenge. I will say the design is not perfect because there's times where certain boss mechanics specifically, the trash is not so much, but certain boss fights, it's like, come on. That's like, like, I remember we, we, <laughs> she came out uh, this week, just today, uh, uh, on on uh, on um, the, the 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 hot air balloon uh, one, the the first boss, um, where you have to fly off. Yeah, the dome she, breaker. She summoned yeah. as we had to fly off. Yeah. And when we came back, she cast the thing, and it was like, oh man, like that's terrible design. Like that, how can that even? What are we supposed to do? You have to get off the boat. You can't kill it in time. So you're either dead if you kill it. Or you're dead if you fly away and you come back and the boss gets the buff. So it's like, what, what do you do there? Yeah. Right? So I think that goes back to many of the previous designs that we've seen. Uh, there were some affixes that we straight away say, said those are bad, but then there were also some that we kind of enjoyed, but they didn't work with all the boss fights and all the designs in the dungeons. So it's kind of the same. I'm kind of in the same boat almost uh, for, for most of them. Uh, for example, the orbs that spawn and you have to soak. Uh, they're kind of the same, you know, it's a, it's a yeah. fine affix, it's a little bit annoying, but then you get to the specific boss mechanic where there's just orbs that you cannot soak or you die, right? Um, yeah. So, um, um, and, and then it, it becomes a huge problem. So, I guess that's that's in the okay stage because um, that was the same way that affixes worked back in the day. Uh, you kind of mm -hmm. swallow the pill and, you know, whatever happens, yeah. happens. Um, yep. And then in, in very high keys, this is not going to be an issue. Uh, but one thing that bugs me a lot is the dispel affix. And I need to bring this up because um, I had some some horrible times when this was this was active. Uh, because first, um, even if they design something like this, because right now it's an absorb shield and, and technically, technically you can heal through it, right? Sure. Uh -huh. But the amount is so, such it's so big of an amount that it's it's not plausible, man. Like the the very first time I remember the very first time I saw this affix on live, I knew how it works from from the PTR, etc. Right. So uh, I I didn't even even look into the affixes. So I go into this dungeon, this thing pops up, and I'm like, oh okay, let me heal through that, right? Uh, and um, I failed the first time. I couldn't heal through it. Like, uh, okay, maybe I didn't press press enough buttons or yeah, I didn't yeah, press them yeah. hard enough, right? Uh, so next attempt, I'm like, uh, let me pop a cooldown, you know, because uh, I'm, I'm falling mm -hmm. behind. I can't heal through that. Uh, so I pop the cooldown. I managed to heal through that. The next one spawns another cooldown. Then we get to the boss and I have no cooldowns because I, I spent all of them mm -hmm. healing the Avex. Um, so I was like, okay, uh, maybe that's not supposed to work this way. Let me try this spelling. But then you can only dispel basically two uh, if you're quick enough. And uh, the other three, what do you do, right? And and these things actually, that's uh, the one that heals the the mobs around it if it goes off, right? If yeah, you don't dispel yeah. it, yep. these yep. things actually heal bosses, man. Like, what yeah. the hell? Oh yeah. Uh, yep. So I'm um, I'm sitting there, and some groups, like some groups, don't have the capability to dispel themselves. Like if you get, I don't think the warrior has anything. Um, what else doesn't have it? Like DKs and rogues, maybe. Um, or maybe Rogues can cloak. Yeah, but, but it's, still... it's a long cooldown, so you cannot cloak everyone, yeah. everything, yeah, right? Gonna, so, yeah. yep. uh, so some groups just don't have the option, and then there are other groups where you have the classes that can dispel themselves, but they don't even take the talent, right? Because it's yeah. it's a healer affix, so <laughs> you know the healers has to deal with that, and yeah. that becomes very very annoying because. Uh, you're first. You're dependent basically on everyone in in your party, yep. right? Yep. Uh, you can easily get blamed because you didn't heal through it. Some DPS is just ignorant about it, and they they, they don't heal. care, right? Yeah. 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 And the annoying part is that when we had afflicted back in the previous seasons, Blizzard said, "Okay, we understand that this is a problem because if the afflicted pops and you have to dispel it, and then there's another dispel mechanic, it overlaps, right?" Yeah. You don't have and, anything. Yeah, and yeah. this is kind of like the same. And uh, uh, it, even like, let's say, last boss of Siege of Boralis, you can't hold your dispel there to wait for the affix to spawn because you need to dispel yeah. one person and then dispel the other one as quickly as possible if you don't have a warlock or something, which is usually the case. So it's not like you have a work around this affix. It's considered healer affix. And they said, okay, this is a problem. And it's still in the game. It's the same thing. Uh, so this is why it's, it's annoying me so much. Um, it, it, it's, it's one thing to design an affix to figure out, okay, it's bad. And then you try to fix it, but this is something that was in the game already. They said, okay, this is bad. And now it's, it's still there.
They they haven't done anything about it. <laughs> yeah, I I think they like the, the they like people talking about it because it is it's tough on some characters. Some characters is a breeze, right? I think Shaman it's like super easy, right? You just drop your totem. And yeah, you're good. they 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 fix that because you could dispel everything with the totem, but now the totem is with increased uh, cooldown, the poison cleansing totem. So now oh, did, they, did they bump the cooldown? Oh yeah, it's uh, I think it's two minutes now. So uh, you can you can get some of them, but then every two affixes or something you, you have to do it without the totem so because uh, they, they thought they thought that the poison cleansing totem was way too overpowered which to be honest it, was, it is yeah. Uh, yeah especially for the an master affix spell, like that the spells, like, yeah so pretty, pretty short it's, it's exactly well they, they increased the master spell cooldown as well right for for exactly those same reasons in Dragonflight, so now Why it's. Why wouldn't they just like make it go on one or two people then instead of like just yeah. nerfing the, the? It's so crazy. I mean, I like how the poison cleansing totem works, um, but in situations like that, and most of those situations, by the way, are affix related. You know, yeah, this is when yep. it becomes overpowered. So yeah. Yeah. nerfing something because of an affix. I mean, there are some design issues there, you know, and I'm not I, I, saying it shouldn't have been nerfed, but I think it got nerfed for, for the wrong reasons. It got nerfed because only people will bring shamans. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They, that, that week, it's basically the only shaman. Shamans are just having a run that week and especially. Oh, yeah. Shamans Let me say it, that right? on, on that first week uh, when so the, after the I didn't even take poison clinic for the first uh, dungeon, but then uh, I figured out, let me see if that works. That worked. And I was like, OK, that's yeah. not that's not an affix anymore. Uh, and then I was done with the keys from my shaman, and I'm like, you know what? I'm done for the week. I'm not playing my other yeah. healers. I'm not gonna yeah. deal with this BS, I'm man. Shaman. I'm not. I'm not dealing with yeah. this. If you're not a shaman, True. yeah, go play your your yeah. healers. I'm gonna go wait for, for next week. And uh, yeah. if you design something like, uh, because we had uh, at least I had this issue a lot in the past. If you design the affixes so they make you skip weeks, you know. I think that's a very bad design, right? And I had a lot yeah. of weeks that I skipped back in the in the past, and now that happens again because of this affix on on the other healers. Um, so yeah, I I, I think uh, I think this is like one of the worst affixes, and uh, I I'm not happy that they they actually brought it back basically because the only thing that's uh, that this is better than than afflicted is that. Uh, it's on you, so you can basically always dispel yourself. And the afflicted sometimes yeah. would spawn in in a cave or something, and you, you didn't have yeah. line of sight of it. That's true. So that's yep. that's an improvement. But everything else that has been set in the past, it's still there, man. It's still there. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. It's it's always um, it's a different. I don't mind the different challenge. It does get annoying, especially if you're like. But maybe that's because I'm super casual for me at this point and not. Um, pushing keys and then like what you were kind of saying earlier once you get to 12 kind of all that goes away anyway so um i don't know I, I you know i just hope that and that's the other thing like what you said like why 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 nerf two abilities like mass the spell and and totem let those characters enjoy it yeah they, they get a week where they get a little bit more invitations well they, those two classes just have, happen to also be the most op i think at this point but yeah um but still, I mean, why, why, why just gut that or not gut it, but make a big change to it when it's it's your design issue, right? The, the issue yeah. is your design, not not the talents, and they should they should really take a look at that. But I think sometimes it's like, what's the easy change for us, right? Um, what what can we do that's pretty quick and what's going to take less less work to do? I don't know because some some of the changes like talking about the the fifteen seconds thing. Okay, here's a quick change. Boom we'll just give you that you know it's just like it's kind of lazy i don't know maybe they're just focusing resources elsewhere oh talking about the 15 seconds and this actually goes to the dispel affix as well because as we said it goes out on 12. but the the places where we where you struggle with this affix and the spells is basically the mid-range like the five to to nine keys where people are a little bit more ignorant and they don't know that they can dispel themselves so this is where you struggle with this affix because once you go into yeah. the higher keys, people are a little bit more experienced with the game. So they know like the people who have their own dispel, they know that they need to dispel themselves, right? So on higher keys, every, if everybody's dispelling, them, dispelling themselves, it, that, it's not an issue that much. And then it goes yeah. away at 12. Uh, but it is, it is the mid-range keys that suffer from that and the, the low keys, right? Uh, and this yeah. is where the affix actually hits harder and where it's active. Um, same thing with the 15 seconds uh, dead timer, man, because this thing starts, I think, at a plus seven, right? 
Yeah, yeah, seven, uh, yeah. I think that's okay. First, first, I think that 15 seconds is way too much, but I also think that it starts way too early, right? Uh, in in like sevens, eights, people are still learning the dungeons. Or you're not even getting the best crests on a plus seven, right? Um, mm -hmm. So you're still in this learning curve, and all of a sudden, you start to get punished significantly more for dying. And first, mistakes in bugs are always going to happen, right? That's that's a given. And the lower your key is, the more mistakes happen. And now all of a sudden you get punished more and more for the learning process, right? This is still the learning process. So um, I, I I know they tried to fix it by adding those extra 90 seconds. That was a little bit of a dumb fix for me because they introduced the affix at first. They were like, here's the extra 15 seconds for dying. And they were like, oh, that's wrong. Now let's extend the timer. Like it's kind of, Counter uh, intuitive to me, yeah. and yeah. Um, yeah. So I I don't know what's your experience with this, but I would probably be fine having this in a non bug environment because in a coordinated group, if you die and you make mistakes, it makes a little bit more sense to punish you. But if you're bugging, mistakes are given; they're guaranteed, and uh, you you're getting punished enough because you before it was five seconds right which is still yeah. part of the timer uh but then yep. when you die you're you're either running back which is even more time we had some obnoxious yep. run backs in dragonflight i don't even want to get there um and yep. then the other thing is you might be using like a battle res and you've lost your buffs etc everybody's talking about that so uh i think you're punished enough uh as i said i think mythic plus is hard enough and now this is just making it even harder um, so I, I don't understand why this was introduced and I, I haven't seen any person that would say I'm happy about this affix, you know, everybody hates it. Um, so hopefully they remove it. Uh, but I don't know. Do, do you have a different take on this? Yeah, I, I like it, but I think it's too broad. Um, and here's what I mean by that. Like you said, uh, going back to the dispels. Four, five, six, seven, they're still learning, right? So why punish them? Uh, same thing, eight, nine, ten. How hard would it be to make it three seconds at, from seven and five seconds to, I mean, health and damage goes up gradually every single key level. Why can't the same thing happen with the timer, right? And really, you're trying to curtail the. Their goal with adding this was to try to prevent the really high level people from just pulling massive, you know, things and, and okay, we failed, but we could still do it because we'll just try it again. And who cares if we die to because the tanks can stay alive and we'll kill this stuff eventually. Um, you know, because he could kite, he could jump around and do all this stuff. They're trying to avoid that. Right. But that's not happening at sevens. That's not happening at eights. The, yeah. the, the, the groups aren't coordinated enough to do that. So why punish them? the same amount that you're doing at a 12 that you're doing at a seven, it makes no sense. Why not gradually increase the, uh, why not gradually increase the death time? Why not gradually decrease cast time as keys go up, right? The lower levels, the key, the cast time is longer, higher levels. It's quicker, right? That's, that's, but that's, that's work, right? And that takes effort, but I don't think how hard is it to engineer? I don't know. I'm not a, not a game designer. I got a friend who's a game designer. He could probably talk about it, but you know, to me, it's more logical. These are just broad strokes of like, okay, 15 seconds for everybody once you hit this key, no matter if you're level seven or level 15, uh, it's 15 seconds. Oh, we made a mistake. Now we'll give you 90 seconds. These are just really broad strokes instead of saying, what could we do to make this work for everybody? We, we have a goal. We don't want this happening. This is the solution. But why do we have to impact the people that are obviously pugging at seven, eight, nine, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe there's skills that are doing it as a guild group that are super casual doing seven, eight, nine. And I'm not saying that to be offensive. I, I'm in a, a guild that ha has very casual players and they love doing keys at like that level, sevens and eights. Like that's where they, they like to function. And there's like one person that does tens and that's like the stud of the guild. And it's like, cool. Um, but, but most of the time people are pugging. So why punish them? Yeah, and I think from our perspective, this 15 seconds is fine for a high keys. And it's it's a, a questionable how we define high keys, right? Because I don't think it should be 15 seconds in like 11s and 12s even because mistakes still happen there, right? If, if, especially if you're bugging. Uh, but that was actually one of the solutions that uh, I was alluding to, have this gradual timer 
to be very low on low keys and then increases as the key level goes higher. I think that's a very good solution uh, because as you said, and I, I love this, this quote, but you're basically hitting the people at plus seven with a punishment that should be for like a plus 15, you know, which is something way out of their range. So having this timer to gradually increase, I think it's one of very good solution. And I'm pretty sure that's very easy to implement because they, obviously they have the capability to change the dead timer in different keys. So, you know, whether if it's going to be 5, 15, or let's say 2, 3, and then it goes by 1 up to like a certain amount, that should be very yeah. easy to do, right? I don't think that that's going to take any effort at all. And uh, it's going to make people uh, happier, I guess, across the board mm -hmm. um, because people who are learning are still going to experience this in, in a way that... Uh, they shouldn't be pressured that much not to die in a plus seven, right? I mean, come on. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, and and then if you get to like the plus fourteens and fifteens, then yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't care if if you die and you're punished fifteen seconds, maybe that's fair there. I, I'm sure people are going to have different takes on this if they're playing those types of keys, but um, at, at that level, yeah, mistakes are are, are not allowed basically. So, uh, it's fine to have a bigger punishment there. I agree. Um, another possible solution, by the way, was to have some free deaths um, that don't count against your timer in the beginning. Uh, but uh, that's also kind of like in the sense of uh, let's add 90 seconds, you know? Yeah, same <laughs> so, thing. Yeah, uh, yeah I think much. that the gradual timer or removing that is it's definitely going to be um, something. Um, all right, so let's jump to the next topic, which is basically going to be the dungeon design. And uh, at the end, we're going to make a tier list uh, of the dungeons for this season and see how we, we like or dislike them. Now, um, one thing that I'm going to mention is that uh, there are a lot of dungeons this season that uh, people are trying to avoid. And I think that's a trend, basically, from, from all the seasons uh, so far. And yep. um, I, I told this story to you before, but uh, let me let me share with everybody else. Uh, I'm going to give an example with an, an old dungeon, the Court of Stars. So that was part of the Mythic Plus system somewhere in Dragonflight, I think. And the dungeon starts with you pressing a button, boarding a boat, and then you go to the dungeon, right? You're just floating on the boat. Uh, until you actually can do something. Because on the boat, you can't even fish. You know, you're just looking into the flowers. Um, so this journey from clicking the button, boarding the boat, until engaging the uh, crash in the dungeon, it takes a minute, almost a minute, right? So you can say, okay, that's fine. What, what's a minute? Uh, I looked into my stats at the end of the season. I did this dungeon more than 60 times across the board on all of my oats and uh, etc. 60 times means that I was sitting in this boat for 60 minutes, basically yep. doing nothing. So imagine yep. what would be if you're like advertising to a friend, hey, come do World of Warcraft play with me because we have this cool Mythic Plus system that's uh, amazing. Yep. It has all these cool features. And then one of the features is you're sitting in a boat for 60 minutes and you're not doing anything, you know? <laughs> uh, so this goes back to, to say that I, I see many boats in this season as well. Uh, we can start with, uh, for example, City of Threats, where you have to, after the first boss, you have to run around, find all the eyes of the queen. Uh, yeah. Then even after you kill them and running around, being blocked by the patrols, I guess that's fine. But even there at the end, you talk to the guy, he's going up to the stairs, so you're just not doing anything. Then there's like, yep. I think, 20 something seconds of RP once yep. he gets to the top. So that's yep. probably even more than a minute. I haven't done the math to that because I just don't want to. I don't want to know the results. Uh, but this is something that I don't think anyone enjoys. And uh, this is not why I sign up to play in Mythic Plus. You know, I sign up to, you know, test my skills, play, kill trash, kill bosses, not just sit there for 20 seconds and watch a guy stare it into the nothing. Um, yeah. And there's many examples like that uh, as well. So, for example, the maze in Mists of Tyrnocite. Um, nope. It is a fun puzzle, right? It is uh, something that the first time you do it, uh, it's fine. Even the first time I did City of Threads, uh, we need to figure out how to find the eyes of the queen. You know, when it's fresh and it's new, you can't enjoy it. But then once you have to do it more than two or three times, it becomes not only boring, it becomes annoying, right? Yeah. Um, and yep. the, same, the same thing with the maze, right? Uh, it's very annoying because usually I play a ranged healer, so whose job it is to, to solve the maze? Well, it's probably yep. me, right? So I'm running yep. around and I'm, I'm solving it, but I, I don't enjoy that, right? Yeah. And uh, I think, for example, in myths, if they made it so, let's say, uh, if you don't want to show all the signs at the same time, right? 
uh, at least make them flash shortly one by one. Uh, so they circle around and you don't have to walk to them and, you know, solve the puzzle this way, yeah. right? It yeah. will be the same, but, um, and they even made it more annoying with the blue stuff on the ground. So now you cannot walk on top of them, you know, that they just made it harder. So those are like simple design decisions where uh, you just, uh, you know, you're just going to make it more pleasant to play. And you have to cater and think about uh, people who are not going to just do this two or three times. They're going to do it multiple times across the season. And once this becomes annoying chore, it's just like every time I get into City of Threads, I get angry, man. Why, why are we running around and we're doing nothing? I just get angry. Maybe I'm just a little angry kid, but uh, I think they, they could fix this with some uh, easy design issues um, that uh, they, they can fix. Have you had the uh, guard teleport? Like the guard is obviously not on top of you and it teleports back and knocks you and takes you back to the beginning. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, that happened actually yeah. many times. Um, I, I even had a video, I don't know if I made a short about it, but um, I was like miles away from it. Like I think that was in the beginning when it was bugged because maybe it was some kind of like a server issue where uh, it was displaced on the server, but the visuals were different. Uh, I think they fixed that part, but that that definitely happened a few times. Oh um, I would twice today. Yeah. Oh, it still happens. Today, yeah. Today okay. it happened to me once, and then uh, and then I was in a key again later today, and I actually waited for it because it happens right when you're going up when you're going up the steps to the boss. That's where it happens. If the if the thing is there, if it's close, I just wait. And yeah. sure enough, the rogue and the hunter went, and boom, she jumped back, and both of them got it's kicked. It's still the three that same guard. Back. Yeah. Oh. I'll yeah. mention one other thing. Um, how many times did you break a dome breaker key because of bugs? Yeah, the, the boat, the tank uh, oh, fell off the boat. Oh yeah, the, there's yep. several, men. So first, when you fly to the small boats on the side, sometimes yeah. I just fell straight through them, right? <laughs> um, and one time I felt two times in a row, right? I, I flew, I fell through it, I managed to make it back flying on the dragon, and I fell through it again, and now I'm out of Vigor, so I can't actually even get back in there, yeah, you know? Done. Yeah. The other done. day, I landed on the boat, like, I, I had my feet on the boat, I was kind of stable, I dismounted, and as I dismounted, I fell through it, and then I died, because I was not even on my, on my, uh, on my mount. Uh, I had... Uh, that was a short, I think that happened only for like a week or so, but when the first boss does the big bubble where you have to fly out, we yeah. had people who couldn't mount up, right? Yeah. Um, that, yeah. that didn't that happen to me, but we had not one, but like the tank and another DPS, they couldn't just mount up. So they, they just yeah. died. You know, there's nothing yeah. you can do. And another bug is when you kill the trash, uh, on the big boat to fly to the small boats, uh, when you mount up, you press your button or whatever it is for you to fly up right and i fell through the big ball down you know i, I kind of get stuck into the middle of the big bolt and you can't even get out of it uh yeah, dumb yeah buggy, man. so and better now it, it still happens i still like yeah. the the one that i landed on the small ball and then i fell through uh -huh. my dad that was last week you know it, yeah. it it's still bad no it's it's still broken and then not the, to mention the line of sight right yeah line of sight and then the other thing that happens is if you have some skills like let's say uh jade fire stomp on your monk sometimes i press this and it like flies away or something like it's not on yeah. the boat yeah you can't you still can't do divine star on priest it yeah. on the on the small boats it doesn't work yeah and do you remember the first week when the the casters had unlimited range in there and if they got aggroed you could be on the boat and they would still be shooting you from all the way yeah. down on the yeah. ground like what so that is very annoying to me because it is one of the new dungeons, right? And you design it this way, but it's full of bugs. And in my opinion, that thing should have made it to live servers if it's that buggy. And uh, yeah. it, it's still there. And uh, I have a friend yeah. who, who has a take on things like that. Like he says, you know, uh, I cannot swim. So for my vacations, I don't go to the seaside. You know, I go to the mountains because I just cannot swim. So I that's yeah. kind of like my same take here. If you cannot make a flying dungeon because they obviously failed miserably with this, don't make it, man. <laughs> like make yeah. the, bo the boat static or something and make them with teleports or whatever. But all of those bugs and, and those things would... Uh, would break keys like especially if you go above 10 or something and you you yeah. wipe on the first boss because you, you couldn't mount like you're you're done right and uh and and it's annoying because uh that's something we didn't mention but 
uh, on the hierarchies, it takes longer and longer to stay in queue if you're bugging to get into a group. So you spend like 20, 30 minutes to get into a key and then you break it because not because of you, but because something bugged out, that feels miserable. And uh, that that's and it's not like it happens once or twice. It happened multiple times, especially in this dungeon. Um, okay. So they they just need to do much better on on the on the scent. The only the only one I will say that I don't mind is Grim Batol because at least when you're on the dragon, it's counting towards percent, which is nice. Um, so I can I'm okay with that. And if you're efficient with it and your team is coordinated, you can actually get a lot of percent there and save some time. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, if people aren't doing it, I've had a couple where just a couple of the people just aren't even using, and it's like okay, now we got to kill all this trash, and it's taking a lot longer. So I I I like that one. I don't feel it's as punishing yeah. um, as you know the the treasure hunt or even the maze. And the maze is even worse because you always get a brainiac that just thinks they know the maze and they they go on the wrong one and they do it multiple times. And yeah. And <sighs> even like I'm running around and I'm trying to memorize all the things and like I I know what it is. Sometimes I even ping it and somebody just goes into yep. the wrong one. Yep. I'm like, man, if, if yep. you don't know yep. what you're doing. Just did the work. Yeah. I just did the work. Uh, and, yeah. and just to add to this, because it's even more annoying, uh, if for some reason I didn't do it, or maybe I'm like melee and w whatever, right? So I couldn't do the maze. Uh, we're done. Nobody has done it, right? The range, yeah. like the BM hunter who has no problem doing it, he's, he's not. Uh, so I'm like, okay, let me run to this one here. So I review it and everybody can see it. And the rest of the people are just standing there in the middle and they're looking at me. And like, guys, you need to help. Like, run oh, to the yeah. other one so I can see them and we yes. can solve the puzzle. What are you like? What are you supposed to do here? Like, you, do you expect me to run around and still memorize them? And like, and the they're just great, and they're man. just standing there and then looking at me. And like, do I leave the key, man? Like, come on, come on, just yeah. I just... did the same thing in Miss. I we were on the on the puzzle boss, and I had a warlock that stood in the the line. Uh, the direct damage thing got killed twice and we wiped. But on that one, I was pinging where to go because I we were in a kind of a, a, a rhythm and I had time to like zoom out and, and see it and I would just ping it. Well, on the second time, um, people were taking damage and I just got unlucky with like the Volpe, the Volpe or whatever, the Fox spawning next to me. So I wasn't pinging it. They weren't killing, they didn't know what to do. Yeah. So now, now and now I'm behind because it's AOE. And so I can't just like heal and tell them where to go. And then we wiped. And then I'm like, guys, I'm super under geared. You guys are like 2,600. How, why are you expecting me to tell you where to go? You guys better get on it. The next, the next pull was flawless. They, they just yeah. did it on their own and I just healed. But it's like, why do, why do I have to tell you to do that? Come yeah. on, guys. There's crazy situations. And one more bug that happened to me in Mists on that second boss um uh, for some reason the tank had it on the side like almost in like the little river around the the arena uh -huh. right Water, so uh -huh. the lines spawn and they were like under under the, the the ground like you couldn't see them like you know that they oh. spawn because your uh timer says yeah, you know lines wrong. dodge etc yeah, yeah. and because yeah. we had like a bunch of people uh close to each other like you move to the side but you move on on another yeah. line and you die and you don't yeah. see the line right so that was another uh, bug that happened there and, and unfortunately, it feels like this season, there's just way too many of those things, especially in the, in the Breaker. But um, uh, that's like one of the reasons that uh, that people are avoiding dungeons. Um, I guess the other one is something we all already mentioned. Uh, it's the mandatory dispels. So, uh, for example, a lot of curses are available in some of the dungeons, uh, specifically Green Bateau, etc. Uh, and if you don't have a dispel, um, you know, you're, you're screwed. Same with poisons uh, in, let's say, Arakara, uh, things like that. And then we have yep. the double dispel at the end of uh, Siege of Boralus. And um, I was very reluctant to, to, to play those dungeons. Even back in the day, we had Temple of the Jade Serpent where you had this last boss where you had two dispels, right? Um, yeah. So to me, this is just not fair because um, if you have a Warlock, for example, to have the second dispel, it's free, right? Because there's nothing yeah. you dispel the other person dispels, you're done. But if you yeah. don't, 
you are struggling, like you're fighting for your life. You're hoping that people are going to press defensive so they 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 can lift until your dispel comes of cooldown and you can do, do it again, yeah. right? Or you're praying it goes on the tank. Please go. Yeah, on the please tank. go on the please tank, right? Tank. Uh, so all of those things. This is this is just a bad design because um, in in bugs especially, you, you don't have control to say, okay, uh, I'm gonna dispel this because you have like a defensive. You don't even know in bugs if people are going to uh, to press their defensives. And then in in organized groups, that's not even an issue because there's they probably have to dispel some things like that. Uh, yep. So I don't know. I I see where they're coming from. They want to have this diversity in dungeons, right? Uh, to have some people being able to tackle yeah, sure. uh, something and others not. But in a bug world, you don't have the luxury of choosing your comp, right? You, you're standing in queue, as I said, you're standing in queue for like 20 minutes. You're just praying to find yeah. people, man. It's not like, yeah. oh, I can pick out of this people. You're praying to find somebody who is seems on paper competent enough to play in your key. Uh, and and they're probably not going to be the class that you want, right? If you're, if you're yeah. uh, handy picking the classes as well, you're probably going to spend an hour and a half in queue and you still might not get it. Exactly. So yep. you end up playing with this group, which you work very hard to get as, as a pug, right, together. You go into the dungeon and all of a sudden you are presented with a problem and you don't have the solution because the solution was 15 minutes back when you were, you were making your comp and uh, yep. it was like pick this talent or pick this class, but you, you didn't have that luxury. So now you're standing there, you're faced with a problem and there's no solution. Like this is, yeah. this is just not fair. This is just not fair. And... Uh, this goes back to us saying maybe they should just put some some options, some um, optional talents in the beginning of the dungeon yeah. so you have solutions yeah. to those problems because uh, I, I see if you're organized group and you're punished because you played wrong, you know, because yeah. in organized group, maybe you have options to change your characters. But if you're pugging, you probably have one character. Maybe you have one ult, etc. but you don't have options, right? And all of a yep. sudden, you have this, this wall in front of you that nobody can solve. So... Yeah. Um, I, I think that mandatory dispels is something that, that shouldn't be there specifically in Mythic Plus. Yeah, and that's where I'm, I'll be kind of a separate. I like I. It's fun, right? Like there's certain fights like you talk about uh, is it City of Echoes or Threads, the one where, you know, when you after you finish the two, the double bosses with all the RP, you go up, you kill all those mobs. And then there's that big beetle at the top of the stairs before you go in. That's the worst as a disc priest. And on my shaman, it's like poison cleanse totem. Yep, I don't There's care. To do here. Yeah, it's it's not even a it does it feels like the easiest trash. And on my priest, I'm like, okay, I gotta get rapture out before. I gotta make sure everybody's atoned. Yep. I gotta have this and this and that, right? Uh okay, I know I'm excited. I'll go okay. Give me a second. <laughs> um but you know, so it's it's interesting. And then same thing with Siege of Boralis, where it's like on oh, my priest. I could dispel one. I could do massive spell if they're together. But, you know, you find a way. You got your pain subs and your sacks. And, you know, we, we play the characters and we know all of our abilities and we know the people we're playing with. By the time you get to some of these places, you kind of understand who are your more sophisticated players and who aren't. We have to do that. You and I are players that we you figure that out by the time you get to the end. And you know, okay, this tank is capable. I'm not going to dispel it on him. He's just going to eat the full dot. I'm not going to worry about it. I'll dispel it off me. That's super easy. Or if it goes on somebody I know who's super squishy, I dispel them. If it's on me, I hit my desperate prayer. I'll hit my fade. I'll hit my, you know, uh, if I'm on my shaman, you know, I'll do the, 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 the totem that gives me a big shield. Um, you know, there's answers as a sack on a pally or just bubble or whatever. Um, so we'll figure it out. But, you know, on some, you know, at the lower levels, people that are still learning their classes, they don't play a lot. They only play four hours a week. That's tough. That's rough. And it's not really fair to them. You want, you want those players to keep playing so that we have a healthy player base. And if you're not considering some of that stuff, that player base will just erode and they'll go play something else like Fortnite or something that's way easier where they're not getting yelled at as a healer or a tank because they didn't do something right. And everybody's mad because they're bitter because they flipped 50 keys in, in only time, like five of them or whatever, you know, you don't you want to avoid that. And so, yeah, you know, we, we haven't talked about this even, even outside the, the, uh, the, the podcast, but player base and, and the healthy player base and getting new players is, is important. And, and mythic plus is one of the, one of the places to do that. And, and they need to find a way to kind of calibrate 
of the levels so that players can learn along the way and not have these huge stepping stones to get to the next level because it's it'll just erode at the player base people will stop playing yeah yeah and 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 again uh if there's a problem then they need to like show you the solution you need to know what to do uh not just to guess oh maybe i need to dispel that you know uh and yeah, then yeah. you need to have the solution because even if you figure out okay i need to dispel that oh shoot i'm the wrong class i cannot dispel that you know uh yeah. things like that she should be much much more friendly uh, both for new players for pugs you know because uh I those guess. problems i guess are there for um I don't. I. I wouldn't even say that they're there for the high-end uh, mythic plus pushers. Uh, but even if you assume that this is why they're there, they have the solution, right? And we don't. So yeah, yeah, uh, that, that's right. That's why. That's why it feels uh, unfair to me. Um, all right. So having said that, let's uh, do a little fun thing. Um, oh, I'll. I'll just show this chart first. Uh, this is going back to saying that some dungeons are better designed than others. Uh, this kind of goes back to this is the amount of times the keys have been played uh, up until last week. Uh, and sorry that it's so bright, but I couldn't change the coloring. So as you can see, okay. City of Threats is something that uh, people will basically avoid. Is it is it because of what I said? Uh, one thing that I'll add is all the bosses there are actually very hard as well. Uh, so the dungeon is not only one of the most difficult dungeons, but it also has this RP, which is annoying, etc. So uh, as you can see from the chart, and if you're not watching your screen, City of Threats is the a dungeon that has been played uh, 1.2 million times. And the winner here is Mist of Tyrion Aside, which has been played almost uh, 2.4 million times. So basically, yeah. people played in Mists almost two times more than they played in City of Threats. Um, yeah. And... I think this shows some discrepancy in the dungeon design because if you design a dungeon and it's good, people will be willing to go there and play it. And uh, obviously that's not the case with uh, City of Threats or some of the other dungeons that we see in this chart. And um, we know that they have this data, right? This this data basically comes from like websites like either IO, et cetera. And yeah. uh, looking into that, they should be able to draw the, the conclusions and, and make you know, the, the needed adjustments. So this chart is not so, uh, doesn't have su such a big right. standard yeah. deviations. Yeah, it, it should be more yeah. more flat. Um, yep. And having said that, let's go and play a little bit uh, of a funny game. Let's make a tier list of the dungeons for this season. Uh, so you can rate them in whatever way you deem necessary, like uh, difficult, hard, fun, or easy, you know, all of those things. Uh, let's try to to express our thoughts on every dungeon and see if we can agree if it's a good dungeon, a bad dungeon, uh, etc. And uh, okay. see how close we are to that chart that we showed on on the previous uh, screen. All right, cool. How about you? Yeah, you. Want you we can we it? can start with Dawnbreaker since this is the first okay. one over here. Um, yep. To me, that is a pretty good dungeon in the terms of design, like. Um, uh, I didn't say this, but I actually don't like flying around in, in mounts because one of the problems there is bugs aside, of course, is that yeah, yeah. Uh, when you're flying around in a bug, some, somebody is going to like land in the wrong place, butt yep. pull something, aggred, or like the tank is going to, to go somewhere and you're not expecting that. So you're late there to the party and people are like, uh, the mobs are just smashing him before you're even there. So that's that's a, a, a bad take on me. Like I like the boss design, I like the trash, I like the idea, although it's not implemented correctly because of all the bugs uh, in the, in that dungeon. Uh, so from that perspective, it's a good dungeon. But if I have to account my experiences there with all the brick keys because a bug happened and there's nothing you can do about it, like if you fall through the boat or you can mount on the first boss, and because of the flying around, uh, this goes pretty pretty low for me. Like I would put it probably into like the the C tier, although it's not it's not a bad dungeon in general. Um, I think that if they implemented it in a better way, like if there were no not that many bugs and maybe you're not flying around, this could probably even go up to like A or S for me. But but in in my mind for now, it's it's not a dungeon that I enjoy that much. So I just have to put it low. What's your take? Uh, I like it. I, I actually like it a lot. I think uh, given outside the bugs, um, I feel like towards the end of the season, kind of everybody knows where to fly. There's a very deliberate path that people go through. And so I like the boss fights. I like the mini bosses. Um, I I like the mechanics on the bosses of like, you know, range get out. Let's because we're going to have to get these big orbs and 
thing and then um and then uh, on the first boss like I, I I I like the mechanics of of all the fights um I like the forgiving timer in that one I feel like that's another one where you can have um some mistakes and some wipes and still time it and get your crests um pretty reasonably where I feel like uh, like there's not a big run back there ever right if you wipe there you just get on your mount and you fly to where you were last and, and you're there it's pretty quick um in in addition to the timer um i like the fights um you know and everybody figured out the shortcut or maybe not everybody but the shortcut on rasha Hashan or whatever his name is where you just fly straight instead yeah. of going all the way around the thing you know first first week People were dying because they didn't know they had to get the orbs and they would, you know, they wouldn't even get to the end platform because they would just die because they didn't have light. Um, so now later in the season, it's a bit more fun. I like it. I probably, from a mechanic standpoint, like boss fights and stuff, I like it. I'd, I'd give it like an A for me. All right, so do we agree on maybe B, somewhere in the middle? Yeah, I think B's in the middle. Yeah, I would assume that it would be higher for you as well if there were, like, no bugs and, and it, the experience was oh, a little yeah, bit better. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'll add to what you said. The one good thing about flying in this dungeon is that the run back time, as you said, is, is actually uh, lower, which Super. it's totally fine with me. I, I totally enjoy that. Uh, all right, next on the list is uh, Arakara. Um, for me, that's not one of the, the most difficult dungeons. Uh, I actually enjoy it maybe because it's new content, right? Something we haven't seen before. Uh, I don't enjoy the mandatory poison the spells. Uh, well, they're not mandatory, but like they're very annoying on the last boss. Yeah. And the last boss is also a puck killer. Like I like the design of the last boss, but if you're not in an organized group and people do not know what they're doing, uh, a lot of keys are break there at, at the end. Um, especially in like the lower spectrum of keys. Uh, so maybe because of that, um, Puck struggling in this dungeon and, and the dispels, I'm not going to put it into S. I would say this is an A dungeon for me, uh, but it's one of the, the dungeons that I definitely enjoy. Yeah, it's it's same for me. It's it's up there. Um, that's one of the ones where even in a Pug, you can do some really big pulls and it's, it goes well. Um, you know, it's It's fun. On my on my again on my shaman it's it's a breeze on my priest the poison um is a bit rough um i see people panicking on the last boss often and so yeah that definitely ends up killing it oftentimes people looking for they don't like i had somebody today say like i need help with the pools and it's like breathe on the mob and the the pool's there like what do you mean they have no health you you breathe on it and you pick one of the ones you want just have a little awareness uh, and then, oh, okay. And this is an eight, right? Which you would think they would know that already. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then just seeing people like shape shift and get knocked into the thing, freedom early, panicking, like doing like a CC, you know, knocking somebody else out of the, uh, that happened to me today. The pilot had freaked out and did a, I don't know if he did blinding light or something, but all of a sudden I was in the boss and I was dead, even though yeah. I was, uh, you know, so you get some of that. So it's funny to see, the panic ensue on the last boss but all in all i like that dungeon a lot i feel like it was put together i like the boss fights i like the big trash pools it's high up there i'd probably give it a, you know an a all right i don't know about f but a, i think you know. i think we can agree on this one to be a um all right next on the list is uh green Batol. now for some reason this is not one of the dungeons that i enjoy uh, a lot it does have mandatory curse dispels, so it's uh, easier to do on some classes than other. And when I'm playing my shaman, it's fine. But for example, if I'm playing disc, it's it's not that good. Um, the other big part in this dungeon, I guess, is the last boss, which is extremely hard. Uh, it does a lot of AOE damage that you have to heal. Uh, then you have to avoid all the tentacles. You have the, the, the debuffs that go on people. And uh, again, a lot of keys are bricked at that end point, which, which is kind of bad because uh, it's one thing to, bre to, to break the key in Dawnbreaker where the bug happens in the beginning on the boat. Uh, so you're like yeah. 10 minutes in and you wasted 10 minutes. But Green Bateau is a long dungeon. And then if you break on the last boss, it, it, it feels bad. Um, yeah. So... It's, uh, I guess it's not bad for an old dungeon that comes back, uh, but I, I wouldn't give it like a high a high score. I would probably put it somewhere in the middle behind Dawnbreaker, like in a B. I wouldn't even mind if it's C, but let's not be too harsh. Um, so let's say it's a B dungeon for me. For me, you know, it's, it's, 
there's some cool mechanics with like the dragons. Um, there's the magic uh, debuff. Uh, you know the big absorb things that go on. It's there's some really interesting things there. Um, the last boss I think is is exciting and fun. I like the last boss. I like the tentacles and the addition of that. I thought that was interesting and in, in the big closing collapsing circle. I think that was a really good improvement. Um, the thing I don't like is the, I feel like it's an unforgiving timer, especially yeah. even though they, they increase like, uh, when you, after you kill certain bosses, you're, you're a bit closer. So like the respawn points, it still feels very unforgiving at certain points. Um, a lot of the tanks cheese, uh, the third boss or is it the third boss, the yeah. dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I don't like when people cheese things. I, it kind of takes the, what are we here for? We're we just going for loot. Are we actually trying to like play the game? Um, so I don't know. That one to me is like BC. I don't know. It's, they it got some good loot. I mean, I want the Gale of Shadows on pretty much almost everything, but yeah. Um, but the, the, the dungeon itself, uh, I don't know. For me, it's like BC. All right. Well, so low B or high C, where you want to put it? Yeah, low B. I low think low B. Fine, yeah. The dragon flying around is fun. I like that. I actually enjoy the, yeah, especially I, I don't on my mind Druid. Yeah, I, I get a break of like not having to spam keys for a few minutes. Yeah. Um. So that's nice. Yeah, I I, uh, I think I agree there with you. Maybe that's the most unforgiving timer. This is my impression for this season, but uh, I, I think this is the one that always comes very close. Yeah. Yeah, it's always tight. <laughs> All right. So Mists, which is obviously the most played dungeon this season, uh, based on the data. Um for me, as I said, the maze is is a little bit obnoxious, especially in bugs, uh, especially if I'm melee, because I don't mind doing it. But if I'm let's say on my pali and or my monk and I need to be in melee, then I, I just cannot do that. Um the the other thing that kind of like took a little bit away from from the appeal of this dungeon was the last boss because this is the last boss is one of the hardest parts of dungeon like I think we can agree on that especially on Tyrannico uh, oh, yeah, which sure. uh, especially in bugs if you're not baiting close to the wall and there's green puddles all over the place and yep. I remember that when I cuz I played at the end of uh what was this uh no that was Shadowlands right yep. uh yeah I played to Shadowlands so I I I played this dungeon back in the day and I still still remember that the last boss was very hard. And now they yep. actually added mechanics to the last boss because there was no green circle around it back in the day. Yeah. You know that that's yep. new. Um, so they made it even harder, especially for melee. Um, so I I didn't think that's necessary. So that was like a big minus for me. Um, and I could put it into as, but because of the maze, because of the last boss, because of those changes they made. Uh, even like the blue circles in the maze are, are a little bit more annoying now. Um, I would probably put it around a around the Arakara. Hmm. Uh, me, here's what I can't stand about that dungeon. Outside of the maze, which I don't mind, I think it's fun, whatever, if, if it's done right, uh, even the puzzles in, in during the fight, I can't stand everything after that because there's always weird trash because the percent... It's not, it's, it's, you know, unless you have the tech to get the, the extra mobs yeah. during the maze, uh, that, you know, you're always never fully at percent and you have to either run past the boss and get it or kill the boss and go get, but I don't like that. I think that's bad design. I think, you know, they, 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 I didn't like that. Um, that shouldn't be that hard to fix. And, you know, so now people are like pulling some stuff from here and pulling them all together and doing and that's all fine, but I think it's a bit, it's just a bit much. And I think it makes it a bit clunky, especially after that boss. Um, the second boss, I saw, or the first boss, I should say, um, is interesting with the two guys. I don't know. I, that one's, that one's for the, the fear and, and getting through that, I think is always interesting. I don't know. Sometimes there's a fear and sometimes there's not. I don't know. I don't know how if, it's. If you're quick enough, I think you, you get past the fear. But if you're slow. If you're pumping. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, because I'm like sometimes on my shaman I always run tremor, but it's like sometimes it's sometimes you don't use it. Yeah, we know. Yeah, exactly. Now I always use. It. I have timers. I I pay attention to my timers. So, anyways, miss. I can give. I I don't give it an SRA for sure. I can't stand after the second, the, the after the maze and all that, and the trash and the poison and the yeah, people yeah. getting knocked off and and yeah, it, 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 and then the link on the bot it, and everybody spreads out in pugs in that one. As a healer, I can never get everybody to be in range at all. It's always a challenge, and there's always yeah. somebody all 
way on the other side. It's very, it's a very uh, uncoordinated fight. It's challenging, but you know, but it's it's still fun. It is one of my favorites, but it's it it's got its pieces. So for me, maybe after thinking about it, it's probably like a yeah, low B, a high B, maybe A, but definitely right. not as for me. Definitely okay, not. yeah, and then not as for me as well. Um, so if we put it here, are we happy? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so uh, that was missed. Uh, let's go to the necrotic wake. Now, uh, this is a good dungeon overall. It's not one that comes back, so we played it back in the day. Um, it's less dependent on weapons nowadays. Um, they were a big thing back in Shadowlands. They they still are, uh, specifically on some pools and some bosses. Uh, yep. But you can maybe you cannot do it without the, the weapons at all. But um, it, it's less forgiving, so to spe speak. Yeah. Uh, I guess yep. the only bad part here is uh, the stage flash boss, which uh, could cause a lot of trouble, and the gauntlet before it uh, for, for for pugs. And uh, it was actually overtuned at the start. This the the AOE mm -hmm. damage, yeah, yeah. The, the pulsing damage yep. was was yep. obnoxious. Huge. So, um, yeah. and and I'm kind of um, you know I, I kind of get annoyed by this because. Uh, I, I had friends in, in previous seasons where they would go into an overtuned dungeon. I can tell some stories about that. They would play it once and they say, oh, this thing is so hard. I'm not going to step my foot here again ever. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's why I, I, I was kind of scared when they, they released it with the overtuned boss. Uh, but they fixed that relatively quickly, I guess. They they nerfed it a little bit. So it's, it's more uh, tolerable right now. Um, so it's probably one of the dungeons that I don't mind at all this season. Um, I wouldn't mind putting it into, into S. Uh, it's definitely up there for me. Um, it does have some annoying parts, but I, I could like overlook them and say that that's fine. Um, do you have a different take? Uh, it's a familiar dungeon for me. I like um, all the boss fights. Um, I like the weapons. It's just a different thing, and it's fun to be able to grab like a spear and then the silence or the shield, um, you know. And then there's some groups that just never grab it. You're like, they go. It's so weird. They'll go yeah. pull the trash for the spear before the the double headed boss, but then they won't grab the spear. Like, yeah, I have, I have two things on my back, and I'm pinging it, and I'm like, why did we clear this trash if you're not gonna go? Okay, I, I don't get it. Okay, uh, you just saw somebody else do it, and that's what you do. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, very interesting. It's a fun dungeon. Um, I love the the boss, uh, the double boss where you the grips, and I, it's it's fun when that is pulled off properly. Where like you know she can't chase because she gets gripped. Yeah, she gets gripped again. If you're like if you do it right, it's so fun. Uh, if you do it wrong, it's very painful with the bleeds and such. Um, it's a fun, it's a fun one, and it's. I was glad to see it back, and I, I like uh, the Necrotic Wake. I enjoy it. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. So can we put it into the S? Yeah, I like. I, it's probably my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I think that's probably one of the good dungeons this season. Uh, all right. So we're going to have an S dungeon. That's good. Uh, next is Siege of Boralus. Uh, now. I find this dungeon interesting in general. Uh, the bosses have interesting mechanics, interesting design, like with the first boss with the bombs, etc. Um, the trash is innovative, but then there's the last boss, right? We, we talked about it already, but having this mandatory double the spell, and it's not even a boss, man. Like it's, it's some tentacles, and then you kill more tentacles. Like, what is this? Like, um, for me, this is a huge deal breaker, just the last boss alone, because it is also a long dungeon. It's at the end of the dungeon. So if people don't know what they're doing, you basically wipe on the last boss, uh, and that yep. feels really bad because you, you wasted all, all of this time. And, um, that for me, it feels like very unfair. The last boss feels very unfair, very, very badly designed. Um, and as I said, it's a huge deal breaker. Like if the last boss was not there, that would definitely be like a S or A dungeon for me. Like I would, I would enjoy my time there, but I'm even avoiding this dungeon in many situations because of the last boss. And I, especially if I don't see a, a warlock in the group or something like that, you know, because if I see a warlock, I'm a little bit more, a more content into going in there, although not all warlocks know how to dispel, but that's a different yeah, topic, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. So because of that, I would drop it down to like B, for example. Um, I, yeah. I, I can't put it too high just because of the last boss, although I kind of like the design of everything else. Yeah, I I hate this dungeon. I hate it. Okay. I hate I hate the uh, I hate the the stupid rifle guys. Oh yeah. Um. You know, you're Harley wants to say hi, apparently. Hello. I think she needs to go out. 
I can hardly. Let me take her out. I'm so sorry. One second. That's she's, fine. She's like, I've been waiting here for 30 minutes. All right. I'm, I'm brushing her to keep her pacified, and it ain't working. Okay, come on, let's go. Be right back. All right. See, even even the dog didn't like uh, Sichu Baralis, guys. Even the dog didn't like Sichu Baralis. So maybe B is uh, is way too high. Maybe we need to do a down to a C. Yeah. So I I that dungeon's rough. The the rifle guys, you know, buggy. Um, I don't like the the boss that jumps away and does the pop shot and then also jumps back and forth between the boat and it's cool but it's also just bizarre. Uh, I don't know. I I it's not. It's definitely. I don't avoid it, but I don't enjoy it. Um, you know, in, inevitably you have enough percent by the time you get to the second to last boss, so you have an extra pack that's in the room when you're doing the fight. And there's always somebody, not always, but oftentimes, if the waves are not proper, people forget, and then they pull, them, yeah, pull them off, and then you wipe, and then they're over time. It's just like, and then the last boss, we don't need to beat that one to death. We already know how we feel about yeah. that. So, and yeah, even on, I, on the I third boss, not... there's like an overlap with uh, the waves on the sides and the front, though. So if you if you oh, fight yeah. it long enough, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. and not I. I can't stand that one. All right, so uh, I was saying B, but I, I guess you want to put it probably as low as D. <laughs> yeah, I uh, mean, we probably meet in the middle, go like C. All right, but uh, I'm, I'm it, fine I, with C, I, man. I, I'm fine with yeah, C. I, um, like I don't mind the the rifles and etc., but they are annoying. Uh, even the pack that you have to fight uh, just before the third boss area, because uh, some people skip it if they know how to, right? Because they don't want to yeah. fight this pack. But if you fight it, yep. they don't know yeah. that the shooting is actually a frontal, so you can you can yeah. stack everything on your tank. But yeah, that's a different different topic. I'm I'm totally fine with C here. I'm totally fine with C. Um, all right, Stone Vault. That is a very interesting dungeon to me because. I actually love the design of everything, like um, all the bosses. They're they're like the mechanics are, are very uh, very um, fun. I, I don't want to say fun, like they're interesting to me. Like I I like yeah. how designed them. Uh, I like how designed the trash as well, uh, with some some stuff that we haven't seen before. But at the same time, everything is extremely hard. Like all the bosses there, maybe the last boss is the easiest, but all the bosses there are very very hard. Uh, they're very bug unfriendly because uh, the first boss. Okay, let's say that. Uh, but even there, like they need to know how to pop the uh, the pillars with the, the arrows, yep. right? Then yep. uh, the second boss, uh, the dispel. Let's say we're healers, so we're fine. But <laughs> that's also yeah. a problem because uh, in in a bad box, your tank can actually get smacked. Like even on the first yeah. one, well, they can low, get one low shot. Keys, yeah. I don't think healers know how to do the uh, dispel. We are also that's another topic. Yeah. Then Skarmorak is just a DPS uh, uh, sanity check because if they kill all the orbs at the same time, you know, um, then there's there's no healing to that. Um, so it, it's interesting design, but it's it's very hard and it's to execute correctly for from a even DPS perspective. Uh, the machine is bossed, probably the hardest one. Uh, once you learn how it works and you know to do the ranged interrupts and how to avoid stuff yeah. on the sides, that's fine. But yep. it, it it is extremely hard, uh, especially in lower keys. And your your tank can also die there if they don't know what to pop their defensives. It hurts a lot. Yep. So yep. the trash is also innovative, but we like with the stacking and the dispelling stuff and, and the fears. Uh, but it's also very hard and annoying uh, with the guys at the end as well. So... If like in this from design perspective, I love it. I would give it an S. But when you have to play it and when you have to experience the dungeon, mainly because it's so hard, um, that takes away a little bit. Like uh, I don't know if it was like a loot pinata and it was very easy. Maybe I don't know how we would feel about it uh, then. But because it's that hard, I'm I'm usually avoiding this dungeon in box and I'm trying to stay away from it. Uh, so that kind of lowers my perspective and my my grade. So I would put it probably somewhere between A and B. Um, and again, it, it's from from hardness perspective, I would even put it lower. But just because I I kind of um, find the design interesting, I would up my grade a little bit. I love this dungeon. It's my it's probably my favorite of all. Of them. I think Necrotic Wake is really fun for me. But um, I love the healer mechanic of the first fight. Um, I like the fact that DPS have to pay attention 
um, with the mechanic fight where they have to die at the same time. Otherwise, we're pretty much a wipe, especially if it's uh, higher yeah. keys and um, the kick and the range kick and understanding that. And, and you know, my shaman, I could just do it. Um, but it, it's nice to see DP when I'm on my priest DPS doing it. Um, uh, I like all the trash, the kicks, the fears. It's a very hard dungeon in Pugs, but it's, I think it's a, it's, it's, it's a very, it's an educational dungeon. And I think it's one of those dungeons where players start to realize they have abilities. They maybe didn't know they had because yeah. you have to use them because the first hallway, look, tanks want to pull the whole thing because they saw somebody else do it and the healer healed it and they did it not realizing you know sometimes if you have a warlock and a mage in the same run you're not going to have a ton of kicks things are going to be probably especially if you don't have a shaman as a healer and then you don't uh, have curse the spells yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly so so you know it, there's there's all this you know all these considerations when building and and a lot of times in low keys people aren't, aren't really thinking of the comp they're just like do we have battle res do we have lust okay let's go um so I think that that's the dungeon that kind of challenges people and, and helps players understand, oh, maybe I need to press defensives on certain things, especially in, in the big AOE bosses. And so I like that dungeon. I, it's, my, it's probably my favorite, even though it is one of the more challenging ones from a sense of um, challenging. That's, oh, it's challenging in a way that's overcome. Or it's, you can overcome it if you uh, play your character properly. Um, so I, I really, really, really like Stone Vault. For me, it's like SA. SA. So, All right. So I would be fine to put it into DA as well. Um, yeah, okay. I can agree it's it's uh, it's interesting, but the learning curve is way too steep, which is a problem for bugs. Um, so where do we stick this? At the end of A, at the beginning of A? What's your take on this? Uh, the beginning means it's higher, closer to S, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for me, it's there, but... Uh, but I, you know, we could we can meet in the middle somewhere. If you want. All right, let's let's put it in between our car and Mists. Okay. I, I think uh, right. this is gonna be probably our most controversial pick here. Um, I, I I don't know if people are going to agree with this one, but uh, let's see let's see what they say in the comments below. Maybe they agree, maybe they not. Um, yeah, all right, it's tough. I'm sure I'm not oh, gonna be. The it's fan tough, man. Like I I even wiped because I I was playing enhancement the last few weeks. Uh, just started to enjoy this uh, spec again. And uh, the orbs on Skarmorak spawned, and they were close to each other. And you know, I'm like, okay, I'm I'm gonna DPS the skull. They were cleaving a little bit, and then I got a tempest proc. I pressed that button, all the orbs died. Oh, you know, no. so I was like, oops, that might have been me, guys. I'm still learning. I'm new to enhancement. Uh, but yeah, you, you need to be even thinking how you're killing the orbs if they're close to each other, because yep. if you if you use yep. your like regular skills, it, it's bad, right? Um, all right, so one last dungeon, and uh, I think that's uh, that's an easy one to to rank. But uh, we've already talked about uh, City of Threads, the extremely bad design with running around the RP, and then on top of that, I think we can add that all the bosses are extremely hard, no no exceptions there. Um, even the trash, yeah, uh, even the trash. But like the bosses are so much harder than the trash that you know uh, you you kind of. You kind of don't think about the trash when you when you mention City of Threads. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of hard trash. Even the mini bosses before the last boss um, it could be very problematic. Um, so and, and then you're running around like an idiot. I would say this. Uh, when last season they introduced Murazon's Rise, I thought that this is like the most nonsense place of all Mythic Plus like dungeons ever. Um, and I thought that they're never, ever going to get close to that. And they didn't with City of Threads, but they they tried, right? <laughs> they tried to get that's close cool. to that. So for me, that's that's the easiest D ever, um, yeah. just because there's no lower tier here. Um, but yeah, do, do, do you think it's higher? Or you're a, no, a it's deep... low. It, it it's probably is that the one that we said also in the in the previous screen that was like the one that had the least amount yeah. of yeah. Uh, clears. Yeah, because you know, look the tra like think about the trash that knocks you back if people don't kick right, and then you're hitting all those things that don't count for percent, and you have to kill all those. Like, yeah. there's just that that big beetle with the poison. If you don't have a poison yeah. cleanse, it's like it's really brutal. Um, the RP for the bosses, the running around finding things, the teleporting things that knock you back to the beginning. I mean, God, man, it's it's a brutal, brutal dungeon, uh, all the way from the beginning to the end. I mean, a couple times this week, today, I died going to the first track pack because the tank was just running. I was just like, it's a brutal dungeon, yeah. and uh, I do it a lot, but it's 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 rough. I easy D for me for sure. Okay, so uh, I guess that concludes the tier list, 
And uh, if you guys agree or disagree, let us know what are your takes uh, in the comments below. Um, and uh, do we have anything else to mention today? Uh, I had a section about uh, talking about the uh, balance and the meta, but I guess we can leave that to the episode where we're going to talk about the dif different healers and things like that. Um, so maybe we can end up with some suggestions on um, what you can use in Metic Plus in, in case of add-ons. And if you have some, some wild takes on what can make your journey a little bit easier, especially if you're pugging. Yeah, I, I have a lot for the add-ons, uh, maybe too many. I mean, I, I think my UI is pretty clean. I'll, I'll, uh, maybe on one, another episode we can do kind of UI overhaul or just a UI, what we're using. Um, but I use a lot of, uh, uh, you know, one of the ones I use is there's a talent reminder uh, for dungeons because certain dungeons require certain things. And so I have a weak or that tells yeah. me, hey, you can keep this, maybe not use that. You can, You absolutely need this. Make sure you redo it. I love that one because otherwise I forget and who wants the key starts and you got to run out, run in. It's, it's annoying. Right. Um, so that's a big one. Is that uh, for, healer, uh, for like all the healers or for, for a specific class? Any, any class, any class. At uh, all, you can, you, uh, any. we're going to link this in the description below. Yeah. Cause I, I created one for shaman and I think I have something for the paladin, but I don't have it for all the classes. And I think that's crucial because if you uh, have the capability to get a certain dispel for a certain dungeon, that could help you a lot. But if you forget, then you're basically trolling. Yeah, so that's yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, I have uh, a couple very specific. I'm a healer, right? Main, and it's like my priest can't handle certain things like bleeds and poisons, but I need to know that um, some of the players have it, and some of the default uh, overlays don't show that, and so I have a couple weak cores that tell me indication that this person has a bleed, this person has a uh, something you can't take, but it's it's important uh, to make sure you focus heal. So I have some of that. I'm currently using Cell, I'm transitioning. I still own a couple of my characters. I'm still using Voodoo because I haven't moved all the way over to Cell, but I like it. I like the absorbs, um, the way that it shows it. It's just, it's a pretty cool add-on. Um, uh, I was using Voodoo pretty exclusively before that. Um, yeah, same here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So yeah i i mean the add-ons is is big i use a lot of weak cores a lot of weak cores but i think i've cleaned up my ui i have a very minimal i would say ui when it comes to yeah my ui and uh i like it i just you know i've, I've even this last week i've really started going through big wigs and removing a lot of the messages um some of the audible cues for things that aren't important to me like the obvious things that are like frontals i don't need to hear something for that it's very obvious um and also clean up my timers because i don't need to know every single ability so i've started to go through um my big wigs to start removing things that aren't important for me so that when i look at my timing uh my timing week aura i know the important things that are coming so um, nothing like earth shattering. That's like, if you get this weak aura or this add on, you're going to win <laughs> mythic plus, yeah. but there's a lot that, that can help improve, give you information that's minimal and, and, and kind of, uh, maybe help you in the long run. Tracking CDs of the, of the, your teammates is, is another big one for defensives. I, I use our ability team trackers, one of the ones I use for that. So there's, there's quite a few that I use that, that I have to have. How about you? Yeah. Uh, Omni CD is something what I used to track the defenses of other people as well. So that, that's a good take. Uh, and yeah, uh, one thing that I'll say is, uh, it's good to have all those things, but as you said, you're trimming some of the stuff that you're not interested in. So, uh, having way too many weak courses bad i think i was in that uh in that wagon at some point and then i started trimming uh because i had too much stuff going on on the screen and i, I realized yo i have all those weak cards and i'm not not even looking into them you know so maybe if i delete these my game is going to be running much smoother which it did mm -hmm. um but yeah, yeah so getting uh getting add-ons and weak cores and then customizing them to do whatever you need them to do for you and not what they're doing for other players i think it's crucial and then i'll add on top of that i'm also using so uh, I transitioned from Voodoo as well. Uh, and I'm having a blast because uh, it is highly customizable. It's much easier to work with compared to Voodoo because the Voodoo interface was a little bit outdated, I think. Yeah. Uh, and yep. still it is. Um, I, I do have a video on how to set it up, by the way. It's one of the, the biggest videos on my channel um, because you can... You can use cell to track everything like i don't need additional weak cores to know if somebody has a poison or, or disease and that you can just uh, use indicators from that add-on 
uh, to track that, uh, the absorb shields, etc. Right, and uh, yeah. it, it does a lot of things for me personally uh, that Voodoo couldn't do because you can. Uh, on your frame, you can assign which part goes where, right? And Voodoo mm -hmm. had some yeah. options to do that, but for example, it couldn't stack uh, vertically of some of some of the skills, yeah. and the yep. interface was even if you know how to work with it, you you had to go to like a course to learn how to do it, right? University, um, yeah. Voodoo yeah. University. So so uh, I'm I'm a huge enjoyer of so we'll, we'll put some links for that in the description as well, um, uh, because I I wholeheartedly recommend it. Um, and then, yeah, avoid having too much and customize everything uh, to your liking. That's that's going to take you a long way. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So um, I guess uh, we can end it here because uh, it's it's quite a lot of talking we did. Uh, we're going to be back next week with the next episode where we're going to talk mainly about uh, rates. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Any final words or shout outs? Uh, yeah. Omega Goddess is my guild. If you guys want to come hang out, feel free. We Mythic yeah. Plus raid. And, do you and, are you in, are you in a well, are you, do you, uh, you you raid, right? I raid, I raid. But uh all right, so let's end with this story. I'm I'm in a kind of weird situation because I'm in Europe, like this is where I live. Uh, but I play on the NA servers because I used to live in the United States. Yeah, there's many reasons, right? So I created my account on the US servers. And uh, I don't want to create a new account on the EU servers now that I'm in Europe because I have like 35,000 achievement points, right? I'm, I'm not, and I have like 800 mounts collected. So I'm not starting from scratch, you know? Nope. I'm, I'm not starting from zero. Uh, I'd rather stop playing the game than start from zero, right? Um, so uh, I do play on um, US servers, but I raid with Australian guild because the raid times, like the raids, the, the night raids in the US is when I'm asleep. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, I needed to, uh, I used to raid with a morning raiding guild from the US, but they fell apart. That's going to be something we're going to talk about in the next episode. Uh, so yeah, now I'm yeah. raiding with a, a bunch of Australians. I'm having a blast because uh, they're, they're fun people and their rate times are aligning with my, my uh, playing schedule quite nicely. Uh, but there's lag issues and, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I would say shout out to Blizzard to, to, to combine the servers and you know that border that we have between NA and Europe. I, I don't think it should be there, but that's a, another broad topic, I guess. I have some contacts. Let me see if I could uh, contact a couple of my friends. See if we get. To I live. I live in Southern California, so the Blizzard headquarters right down the street from my house. Yeah. So I got a couple of buddies that work over there. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, I, I think somebody brought this question up in one of the interviews, and I was very excited because this is something that I wanted to ask. You know, and yeah. I was very disappointed with the question because they said something in the sort of there's legal issues in doing that. Like it's not that. And and by the way, the servers they can do that because. If you go into a tournament or PTR testing, you get people from like Copy. Europe and you yeah. see like a Copyright. Cyrillic language yeah. there and the French and the German, et cetera. So yeah. they have already done this. Like it's not technical yeah. issue with yeah. some of the excuses they had back in the day or we, we called it this wrong, right? This is existing there in the game. So their excuse was, uh, we have some legal um, borders that we have to pass through uh, in order to make this work. But like, Come on, man. Like, you're not the first person to, to face this problem. There are games that are facing these issues. Okay, I get it. The European Union, I can say a lot of bad things about them. They, they basically screw up the whole internet with, with their low stuff that you have to, like, have... I'm using cookies yeah. on my website. Do you yeah. accept yeah. everything? Like, they, yeah. they, they made a huge mess out of this. And I get this, but this is not something that should be used as an excuse because they can definitely overcome this if if they wanted to there's, there's there's different approaches even if i was like using um like if there's like some kind of separation of my us and eu accounts but there at least i shared the achievements and everything right uh even if i cannot play the characters to to, to, to the other place that would be something that is going to be huge for me but uh, unfortunately it's not oh man well Maybe one day, hopefully. We'll we'll, yeah. we'll see. Hopefully. Yeah. They're working well, on it. Pleasure. So. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Blizzard. If they, right. they may, if they if it charges you 100 bucks, they'll probably do it. I bet you they'll do it. But no, that, that's the other thing. I I cannot uh you can transfer between servers, change your character's name, race, etc., but you cannot charge from the US to the EU account. Like right. even that's not an option, you know. So I'm 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 basically stuck there. Like I I'm not complaining cuz I'm having fun with the people that I'm I'm playing with, but 
uh, even like, because I know people from Europe, like I'm in Europe right now. I know I have friends who play the game and they play on US servers and I cannot play with them. And I, I don't yeah. have this option. So uh, why is this border there? Like, let us let us play the game. I, 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 internet. I, Come on. Yeah. I, I haven't mentioned this before, like in, in videos and stuff, because I think I'm kind of like a snowflake. Uh, I don't think there's many people like me who are like playing in the wrong region. Like, what did you do, man? Why are you playing in the wrong region? But yeah, here I am. That's me. Well, and... I, there is. We I used to raid with a guy that was uh, from, uh, I can't remember the name of the country. He's, he's one of our tanks. And one of my good friends now, was uh, he's uh, Italian. And he sometimes plays on you. He has two accounts because he'll go back and forth. Sometimes he'll play EU and then he'll come here and play an A. Um, and it's unfortunate because you, you know, like you said, you got mounts, you got titles, you got things like that, and you want to have all that, but you know, he has two whole accounts for that, which is a lot to maintain. So it's unfortunate because it's yeah. totally separate. I, I thought about this, but like I'm dev devoting a lot of time to this game, uh, but if I'm to maintain two separate accounts, because I have to like level all the characters there and then I have to yeah, gear them again too. and get the IO. Like that's basically going to be double the time that I'm playing right yeah. now if I want to maintain two accounts, and that's that's not plausible for me. That's that's yeah. also impossible. So uh, it's yeah. just it's just not an option. Uh, yeah, I thought that's gonna be a topic for for a different episode, but uh, here we go. We we mentioned it we here. Flip it. Flip yeah. it. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, so well, it, thanks again for your time. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. Yeah, I, I would be interested uh, to see if uh, anybody else has takes on this and they're they're feeling like they're playing playing on the wrong region. Yeah, yeah, I don't maybe, think you're by yourself. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, it's good to know. All right. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for uh, for being with us on this podcast. We'll see you in the next episode. Now, uh, get Thanks out of here day. and take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs>